Last week on Glee Boot, we got what we're all pretty sure is Marley's last storyline ever. They went to nationals. They had a pretty good performance. Will decided Sam was the leader because he was the nearest straight white male. And Tina made a really hilarious face about it. And that's what you missed on Glee Boot. Yeah, seconds before Cullen does these intros, we try to, you know, brainstorm what we're going to talk about in that. And I literally could not conjure a single thought because that episode, totally gone. gone. I think what you mean is you brainstorm because my <laughs> brain is completely blank every single week. New show, new show. Yeah, Who are these characters? It's a blank slate. Uh, it's like when Cassie was on the tabs, who's Ryder? Who is you? <laughs> <laughs> Who is Marlon? Uh, Yeah. Glee so yeah welcome back to glee boot the show where uh we get drunk and talk about rebooting glee i'm cullen and i feel very good looking today so you're welcome world um <laughs> visual media <laughs> visual yes media. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear it in my voice yeah i'm Alyssa, which i never say i usually just say Alyssa. uh-huh because you're anti the i'm melissa because it comes out people yes. are like oh melissa no you're like no <laughs> Um, honestly, I, I will never forget that. Uh, I'm, and I'm Hannah. I feel neutral about my appearance today. <laughs> Although my hair is really soft. That's something. It looks good. Medium. It looks good. <laughs> and today we have a very special guest, a crossover from, you know, a pillar of the Glee podcasting community, uh, Glee on the Rocks. Um, we have B. Hey, everyone. Oh, my God. Pillar of the Glee podcasting community. <laughs> that is just like such a um, honor. And my cat, Hot Maya, cat. is also on the mic, apparently. Hello. Um, I kicked you out of here. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Um, love Glee Boot. I feel like you guys are my people. Just like listening to your podcast, I'm like, yes, mm -hmm, they are correct in everything they say and do. So um, can't wait to talk about this one with you guys, especially because season five, of course, is where I kind of fell off watching it the first time. And you guys are all kind of watching it for the first time or several of you, right? So yeah. it's like, yeah. it felt new when I was watching it. I was like, I don't remember any of these plot lines or any of these songs. So it's cool to... Um, be in that space because so much of Glee like I felt like I memorized <laughs> because I was yeah. such a fan back in the day you know it was like I could probably like quote it with the sound off but so <laughs> it's cool to be yeah to to do an episode that is feels fresh so yeah part of the lost seasons as we lost like seasons, to yes. yeah. season five especially has like no identity really yeah, I don't mm -hmm. really know what's happening. It's like, it's just like a series of events. Like there's nothing yeah. really they're building towards. And it's like, it's kind of understandable because of the tragedy. Um, mm -hmm. The writers basically had like five minutes to recalibrate the rest of the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's understandable, but it is disorienting to watch. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Especially because this, you know, this episode being the hundredth episode and on, the Glee Wiki comes through with the facts that like Ryan, Ian, and Brad all write, wrote this one together, and yet oh, really interesting. nothing happened. It, it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and did, but audience members got to vote on the songs yes, that were featured. I remember that, right? Mm. Oh. So we as a society are to blame for this. <laughs> we did this okay. to ourselves. <laughs> I was gonna say they pick some weird choices, but that makes sense. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. <laughs> So do you want to briefly talk about like your journey with Glee and kind of Glee on the Rocks, which I'm pretty sure I listened to some of the first episodes of Glee on the Rocks and I was mulling over the idea of creating Glee Boot. So I was like, you Let are me our oh, pillar. Wait, you guys had no idea. This is so fun. Okay, yeah. wait, that makes me so happy. We're so right. linked. Love it. No, it's perfect. Like I said, I could tell you guys were my people when I was listening to the podcast. So <laughs> this totally makes sense. We're like cousins. Um, yeah. So... Glee on the Rocks started years and years ago. I actually was a huge fan of the podcast before I started as a host um, because the three original hosts, um, one of whom has left, the other two are still there. I digress. Um, we were all fans of Glee, like on Glee Tumblr together back in the day, like when the show was airing. Very invested, you know, like behind the scenes, um, 
uh, like being a staying up all night. I'm trying to say like the when they were ice skating, like Darren and Chris were ice skating for that one song, like stayed up all night for the news. And, um, you know, we were watching the breakup be filmed and it was just like really a huge part of our lives at the time. And um, so they started Glee on the Rocks to kind of I always say it feels like therapy and I think it is like just going back through each episode and talking about like what it felt like then what we think now like how our perceptions have changed over time like the fandom response to different things which was especially interesting like going through season like three um uh, and like the box scene project and things like that I'm not sure if you guys are familiar um, but just like how the fans interacted with the show and how the show kind of talked back to the fans. Um, I just recently, we did an episode where Brittany talks about like the lesbian blogger community yes. or whatever. And it's just like digs at the fans, you know? So, um, it's been very therapeutic to, um, be a host. So I joined as a host in season three and, um, we are, yeah, just kind of what you guys are doing breaking down every episode, but we try to like take time to think about the fan response and like look at what people were talking about on Twitter at the time and like how some of the things have um lasted and also not lasted over the years held up I should say not held up over the years Mm -hmm. um especially like season four we're getting into um unique and um how the show is handling like gender nonconformity and yeah it's really therapy so I, do you guys feel like that when you do Glee Boot that you're kind of like working through some issues? Because that's always what I feel like. I mean, I feel like it's a show that you you can't watch and not discuss. Right. You know? Yeah. You know, yes. uh, I like, I watch Riverdale, I'm behind, but like, that's a show that like I watched. And I'm like, okay, I need to process what just happened to me. <laughs> um, so I think when I finished, when we finished season three, I wrote like, I think the website says it takes 45 minutes to read like this huge <laughs> blog post where I ranked every single Riverdale character up until that point. Whoa. And mm-hmm. now this show is totally different. I just went to Paley Fest and I met the cast, not like met, but like they were there doing a panel. Yeah. And like we watched an episode and like people are like possessed by witches and have superpowers and I'm here for it. But I'm like, <laughs> what happened? Like the new villain has mind control powers. Um, I feel like that would be very similar to someone who like was a fan of Glee for the first like just like up until like season two season three then they went to paley fest and saw the cast and they watched an, uh, like a season five episode and were like what <laughs> like, i'm sure it's pretty similar minus all the supernatural stuff yeah a very similar, similar and the lesbian blogger community the right the choney fans so cheryl and tony right the young lesbians, they were out in full force. Like half the audience questions were about Choni. When will mm. they get back together? Like I was traumatized when they broke up. And no, it's really kind of cute to see that like, cause they're kids. So that's why I'm thinking cute. Not in like a condescending mm-hmm. way. Like they're literally like 14, but like Wait. the, like how like Britannia resonated with people and how Choni resonates with people, but also like, it makes me think of how like we need to do so much better because I feel like a lot of these teen lesbian couples and shows are very toxic yes Mm. and Mm -hmm. I'm like these kids idolize them and it's great that they have this representation and I'm not saying like Finchel is super healthy or something but like (laughs) we need to like do better at like creating couples that you know conflict needs to exist because it's a show but like that you know, maybe don't start out where one is convincing them that it's not cheating because it's with girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is, you know, such a thing about like Glee's fans talking to the show and the show talking back, you know, Britannia wouldn't even exist if the fans hadn't really been up in arms about it. I think that was really going to be just like a throwaway joke. um, Yeah. That (laughs) Brittany and Santana have sex or whatever. Um, And then, wow, season six, they come full circle. So I don't want to spoil it. I just remember you guys haven't watched it. You probably already know. They get the happy ending. I'll just say that. I don't think that's a spoiler. (laughs) Because pretty much everybody gets their happy ending. Because it's Glee. Yeah. Except for Tyke. Justice for Tyke. I don't actually remember. They might get together, too. I don't think (laughs) I think we do get to see Matt, who got spider eggs in his ears in the last episode. So Are you serious? What? Matt's back. Matt's spider eggs in his ears? What? Wow. 
Did he ever speak? He had, I used to be just another football player. Oh. And they brought him back. You know then what? I like shouldn't judge. But he left the school. <laughs> you know what? I shouldn't judge. It's whatever. It's fine. <laughs> so um, definitely check out Glee on the Rock, listeners. I'm sure you love it. Um, did you take the BuzzFeed quizzes? I did. Those were fun. <laughs> I've never taken them before. Neither um, have we. We took our boyfriend, <laughs> but we don't know what character we are. You don't we know just what character you are. Assigned okay. our characters. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm and I'm happy with that. Um, for character, I got Quinn. Everyone gets Quinn. We have Everyone does. Really? Quinn. Okay. Quinn and yeah. Finn. Like, am I emotionally unstable? I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe. Do um, the writers of the world hate me? <laughs> it's like you know, Quinn's basically they project everything onto her, so everyone can be Quinn because Quinn is all things. Um, but it was very like on point for this episode because Quinn has like a storyline where she can't confront her past, and so I was like, oh. Um, <laughs> You're like, I'm ow. Also, right? I was like, oh. I'm also, you know, an ex-evangelical. So maybe, maybe there's some, there's some, some there. parallels. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe I should have a skank phase. I'll put that on my, <laughs> on my to-do list. Why not? Um, and then for a boyfriend, I got Sam, which is sweet. He's, he's fine. We love Sam. I'm, I'm also, we he's also Sam. my boyfriend. Yeah. So oh, I love it. Perfect. <laughs> We do get a, a lot of people get Sam, but I feel like that's like a good answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could get Artie, like me. <laughs> yeah, well, so there's nothing toxic about Sam. Other ones, maybe so. Yeah, yeah. Or Artie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not a good boyfriend to anyone. Is what I'm trying to say. No. <laughs> I saw that he got last place in the polls yeah and our, when i voted on nerd it was styles ben grossman already last so he That's did even worse because rachel was the first glee character not to win the poll but already mm. was the first to lose um, ooh. yeah so speaking of which our theme this week is bad boys we have jake puckerman of glee mm-hmm. okay. we have bash uh from rain um, and we have Damon Salvatore from Vampire mm. Diaries. Mm. So as usual, so I would marry Bash because he may be a bastard, but he still has royal blood and he's actually pretty nice. Um, I would fuck Jake because he's hot, um, but I would make him wear a condom because he has slept around a lot. Um, <laughs> and I would uh, murder Damon because vampires make me uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, hmm. that's tricky i'll pull up a picture Alyssa. of bash of all of them okay hmm. i think i actually have the same answer don't love damon salvatore as a character from the very little that i have seen the show don't know anything about rain but this guy looks pretty yummy he's got sweet eyes and you know what? Noah Puckerman, he's got great abs. Not Noah Puckerman. Oh my God. Jake Puckerman. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he's got great abs. <laughs> Noah Puckerman is a monster. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be different this week. I'm going to go Ooh. ahead and marry Damon and uh, pester him until he makes me a vampire so mm-hmm. I can make Colin uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no other reason. <laughs> um, and I'm going to probably smash Damon and kill Jake because oh. yeah, there's not really any other reason other than I feel like Damon is more my type. That's it. Mm-hmm. Although Jake's okay. really good at dancing, but yeah. he was horrible to Marley. So maybe I'm on the get revenge for Marley train. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got to meet or not me. I saw Aaron Westbrook who's on Riverdale <laughs> now and I, and they mentioned her being on Glee and I was like, you were Brie. Thankless role. Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. I forgot I was about that. like, wait, Brie. Cause they're, they're talking she's about, like gone yeah. in the show already. She was there for yeah. four episodes. She was there huh. and like so prominent and then just like gone. They're, they're talking about doing musical numbers on Riverdale and she's like, yeah, I came from Glee and I'm thinking like the only musical number you had was when you were like, uh, <laughs> my name ain't baby. It's Janet, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty, slap. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it really prepared her though. Yeah. <laughs> 
what's fun about this is I have no frame of reference. <laughs> 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 I've never seen Vampire Diaries. I've never seen Rain. And I'm also a huge lesbian, so I will just take a stab. Um, I'll take a stab. Uh, I know Jake the most, so I guess I'll have to marry him. At least I know what I'm getting into with him. True. Um, and just totally guessing off of their pictures. Um, I'm like, do I want to, what I want to, what, like, what's a vampire like in bed? Like, that's like, that's the question. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't see Breaking like, Dawn part one, so. Twilight vampires, know. right? I'm like, Twilight <laughs> vampires, hmm, might hurt you if you try to have sex with them. Um, not intentionally, unintentionally kill you. Um, okay, so I'm going to say um, smash, bash, and kill Ooh. David. Just kidding. Nice. I, yeah, I don't know what I'm getting into with that. Probably better to just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> circumvent that whole situation. Um bad nice. boy though. Interesting for um for Bash. He looks, he does, he has very who said he had kind eyes. Yeah. He I does did, not yeah, look he, like he would be a bad boy. Right. It's kind of like uh <laughs> it's like a secret bad boy. Cause you yeah. just wouldn't yeah. expect it. It's He's like, got like floppy hair. Like that's not the bad boy do. It's like the <laughs> the the plot twist because it's like she's engaged to his half brother who's like the crown prince. Gotcha. Mm. And he's like the bastard. So it's like the edgy option. Oh, so he's like tortured. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mom is the mistress that. who smothered the Got queen's it. babies. Yeah. Jesus. Complicated. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so what are we drinking today? I've got some boxed uh, red wine from Trader Joe's. In oh, honor of <laughs> April Rhodes, lover exactly. of boxed wine. <laughs> Love her. Uh, I've got a Tobo Chico hard seltzer. Yes. I bought Truly's uh, specifically for this and then decided that I didn't want any sugar. Like they're mm. really sweet. They're really good, but they're really sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead I made myself what I believe is called a Jamaican breeze, which is vodka, grapefruit juice, and cranberry juice. Mm. So it's it's like a nice tart drink, which is definitely more along the lines of what I was craving. So nice. I'm having one of Alyssa's truly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, we're here to talk about the hundreds episode of Glee, uh, named uh, Hundred after the CW show, The Hundred. Um, <laughs> uh huh. That makes yeah. sense. Um, stuff happens in it. Let's think. What are our storylines? We have Saving the Glee Club. We have Rachel and Mercedes doing their 27th trillion diva off. Um, We have uh, Quinn and Puck getting together and Santana and Brittany. Yeah, that's basically it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to put, like you say, saving the Glee Club in my my mind is blank, like still. Um, that's what yeah. the April Holly all that yeah oh okay, yeah okay, April okay. Holly's shoe they didn't just show up because it's the hundred episode because I feel like that's what happened <laughs> it's also because of, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. well at the beginning he's like a hundred lessons and I was like you counted how many lessons <laughs> you gave no you didn't it's just the hundred episode <laughs> yeah no because also like including like nationals and sectionals and stuff. And yeah. sometimes there weren't actual lessons that wouldn't be lessons. right. <laughs> <laughs> Zero effective lessons. Exactly. Let's do it this way. Okay. Santana and Brittany. Brittany uh, feels like she's just can be creative. You know, she's just doing math all day. She's uh, being tested on and I was partially right. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, I was right. She is being tested on. Because they were it's like crazy. giving her numbers and she's just like, I don't know, six. And they're like, and, and they're like gave her some like, random math problem. And I kind <laughs> of wanted to do it to see if the answer was actually six, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Someone else can do that. Yeah. I thought about that. I was like, you know what the writers probably did? They typed in a random number times yeah. six. Uh-huh. <laughs> and they wrote that. Yep, that's exactly what it was. They did have her connected to so many wires. She was like living in a habitat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So my theory was that she wasn't actually a genius, that she was like 
another level of intellect, either good or bad, according to these MIT people. And they wanted to study how that worked. So like, but I think she is like an accidental genius. That kind of seems to be what the threat is, but they are definitely testing on her. And I was like, that's horrible. I don't think they do that to normal MIT students. No, I don't think so. I worked there. I didn't see any signs of testing. <laughs> Confirmed. We had someone on the inside. Myth busted. <laughs> so yeah, so she's can't feel, feels like she can't be creative, and Santana's like, well, like you need to, you know, you love to dance, like that's part of you, you know. Um, so let's reunite the unholy trinity, you, me, and Quinn. Because, yeah, everyone's in town because they're talking about the Glee Club falling apart. And these characters can very easily drop their lives at the drop of a hat. Um, mm-hmm. So then this they is, do Toxic. Which concerns me because that was picked. Yep. Okay, so was this whole, like, what song should we redo? Or, like, what songs do you love? We, like, we do. It's perfectly redo. Okay. That's okay. So it doesn't, better, it doesn't concern me as much. Maybe yeah. it's because they're like, edit shoe out. I think that was yes. maybe what they were thinking. Um, okay. Okay. That's less concerning. Other choices though, still concerning. Like this context for toxic makes a lot more sense than the last time. Yeah. Like these yeah. characters singing it. Um, the choices they made, though, like these adult women in their high school cheerleading outfits being uh-huh. sexy. Um, and then on the other side, in these their, adult like, women in like lingerie dancing. With like in the- against steamy glass. It's like cell block tango, but with yes. glass in front. I That's what I thought. It's just. But something happens this episode that makes you wonder like was that also real or just a fantasy because things Mm. that I have thought in the past were fantasies have been confirmed to be real this episode well I took this one as a fantasy just because her stupid boyfriend Biff which is the worst (laughs) name imaginable (laughs) he's also probably like Biff something the third so that makes it worse Macintosh yeah Biff Macintosh the third I had to write it down because it was so ridiculous. Colin and I watched the episode and I was like, Quinn needs to like stop picking men with terrible names. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she needs so to true. just, all of the men she's dated have terrible names. And I think there's a correlation there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's quit. We'll get to Quinn. Um, but so they do toxic and Brittany's like, I was off by a half 17 step or something and <laughs> Santana's like no you were amazing and then Brittany is out on the their outdoor patio that they have this Ohio <laughs> public school um, <laughs> with people dressed in chess outfits it's the um, chess club apparently the chess club. and she's have like having them chess board. Yeah. yeah she's having them recreate this like famous chess match to unwind that was just the craziest thing to me I was like she's <laughs> She's a test subject and they like brainwashed her, I guess, to only like analytical things. <laughs> I don't know. But it's not even, they're not even playing chess. They're recreating they're a chess recreating. match. But Kiki is there. Kiki's back and Kiki is playing. Yes, I do love Kiki. Yeah. I feel like my theory is they found those chess outfits in like some back like closet somewhere and they're like, yeah. we gotta like bust we these out. Like, these this. are too good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what is the point of re- recreating that? Like, know. it's not like she's trying to like reverse engineer it or anything. Yeah. I don't or, like, know. Like beat the computer? No, she's just no. like. She's just like, let's reenact this. That's that's the only creativity she has, <laughs> which is which, actually kind of sad. But. Very it sad. We made think of two things. One that I was in chess club in high school. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I ended up as the president only because vice president because everyone else graduated, but mm-hmm. I was more of like a glorified babysitter for like the mm-hmm. underclassmen. I just like right. made sure they didn't fight because I like couldn't I couldn't care less about chess by the time I was like a senior. <laughs> <in high school. laughs> um, but you still showed up to all the meetings. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
And then um, it also made me think of every once in a while, I remember that LARPing exists. Yeah. I'm like, I want to do that. That sounds fun. And I like, there's this huge LARP near LA, but I start reading the rules and I'm like, wait, it's I start intense. thinking about the people that are going to be there, their thoughts on like women. And mm. then I keep thinking about like all the rules and I'm like, mm, you know, I think what I really want to do is host a murder Mr. Dinner Party. <gasps> yes. Because mm-hmm. I want to play pretend, but I don't want to like fight. I feel that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ten, 10 out of 10 recommend a murder mystery party. But I want, want back up. What is the rule about LARPing that like turned you off? Like what can well, they like they're I'm like just, okay, like I'm imagining so many things. Sex. Like they're like, okay, don't run at and charge at someone. Like don't okay. like, don't hit for the face, don't hit for the crotch, like all these things. But it does make me think like these rules exist because people do those things. Because people do <laughs> <laughs> and they and we were gonna and they had to stop them. And mm-hmm. like like they're like it's and they're like it's very fighting. You can be attacked at any time. And I'm like It'd be cool to do, like, I guess one fight, like, one battle. But, like, really, <laughs> I just want to, like, explore and, like, play. I just want to play pretend yeah. as an adult, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that's a murder. <laughs> what I'm thinking of is a murder mystery dinner party. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or, like, an immersive experience where, like, they, like, have part of the woods and, like, Nancy Drew or the Hardy Boys or, like, Riverdale, yes. like, you know, like, <laughs> do a mi- solving a mystery. Like, that could be fun. But, like, I don't want to have to, like, fight. No, yeah. I think you should look at a renaissance fair, if there's one near you, there is and, one near me, yeah. and an escape room that's highly themed. Ooh, I think both of those things would be up your alley. Yeah, I do love escape rooms. And yes, renaissance I love fairs, an escape room. They're all, I've they're, never been I, to one, but it seems like they're fun. You, know, you could play pretend if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, they're fun. I, I'm always slightly confused, but I usually have a good time. Yeah. I it's like all my buddies like do one. Slightly confused in, in the escape. Nobody's charging out here. I fell Crouch. on my face. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh no! It's like, bam! Oh no. no one was there to see it because I was moving from one room to another. And apparently, <laughs> the camera didn't even catch it. It was. Yeah. Well, <laughs> did you finish the escape room? You were like, we did. We did. Like, oh, yes. But, nice. Um, <laughs> there's no evidence that this happened. So nope. either you're relieved or sad. <laughs> um, I know both because it was oh. really funny and it's fun to talk about. But then right. I feel like people don't believe me because yeah. there's no pictures and so no one else is. saw it. Yeah. She just wants attention. So she's going to lie about an escape room. <laughs> Slap you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, why would you I lie? You. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Because <laughs> that would just be silly. I'm an Alyssa <laughs> escape room truther. I believe you. <laughs> My new campaign. <laughs> Amazing. So, St. Hans, like, you love to dance. And then, uh, <laughs> oh God, how we got on escape. Like, yeah, we that's what I'm here for. To, like, we're the to the and move us back with no also, explanation. Cullen did a very good job of explaining what this, this episode is. It's just mm-hmm. a series of scenes with musical numbers, and nothing really ties together. Yes. So, this episode is going to have a lot of tangents because <laughs> it's like, you know. Yeah, it's, it's like not a- like where there's like a nationals, we can really sink our te- teeth into that. Or like yeah. men telling Santana how to feel about being lesbian. We can really like discuss that. But like, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is just it's like, st- a, it's like a jukebox ep- episode in a jukebox show. Like, <laughs> yes. Like, yeah. So, like, yeah. It's like even the, the songs make less and less sense. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the theme of this season is shoehorned in musical numbers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There are about two numbers that I think make sense this episode. And we're about to get to one of them. Yes. So Santana, like Puck's going to do something and Santana stands up and it's like, I'd like to uh, honor the time-honored tradition of this glee club of hijacking it into basically a personal intervention. And yes. make everyone watch. Love that. And I'm like, that, yeah, that was so good because it's so true. Yes. <laughs> um, and she's like, we're going to do Valerie from sectionals. Great number. My friend Tierney, who's been on the podcast, just did Valerie at karaoke. Yes. And I was singing like in the crowd doing that bop, 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 bop that they do in the glee cover. Yes. Um, I, I love that. I elected to sing California Girls. Um, Makes sense. Choice. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I really hope they don't put the rap part in. They did. I did it. 
It's oh, fine. No. Whoa. <laughs> Where's the video evidence of that? <laughs> so don't believe it. That's what I want to see. Yeah. So like they're doing Valerie, Santana and Brittany are dancing. Mike is like dancing and he comes out, he's dancing. Jake is like, I'm the new dancer. And he comes he out, Jake out yes. <laughs> and they're just dancing. Um, it's fun. It's a good song. Good yeah. number. And it does actually make sense to like remind Brittany yes. about like how she used to be and what she loves. Um, so you building on the show's history in a positive way. Um, mm-hmm. Then we kind of, they're like chilling in the choir room. Like, I think they're eating churros. That's what I was wondering. It's like, it's either something like deep fried stuff with cheese or it's a churro. I couldn't quite tell because the one that Brittany was holding looked like there was cheese in it, but Santana looked like she was holding a churro. I don't know. That's a mystery that we'll never solve. (laughs) And uh, Santana is like, you know, like you love to dance. You need to go out. You need to date people. You need to go have fun. You can't just be a robot. And then Brittany's just kind of like, I'm really happy with you. You know, like you make me have fun. And she kisses her. And Santana is like, you know, like, I can't do this. You know, we've been Mm -hmm. here. I can't do this. And Brittany's like, I'm sure your girlfriend's great. I'm sure she sang Skyscraper to a ghost once. (laughs) But um, she, like, I'm better, you know? And and that's kind of the note they end up. She's kind of sassy. She was like, I'm here if you want me. If you want me. Yeah, Yeah, it gives her another I'm here when you want me. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, because it's literally like, like, you make me feel alive. And Santana's like, I have worked so hard to get rid of you or to get rid of yeah. you, get over you. I'm tripping yeah. over all my words. Um, but like the, I think the one thing that really got me is, is kind of like Brittany's kind of Brittany's attitude was like, normally we're like, oh, she's like the most like emotionally intelligent person, but mm-hmm. she seems really different because it feels, it feels like Santana is the one who's really trying to like lay down the law, which seems a little different like a role reversal not that that's bad I just thought it was kind of interesting yeah it did kind of feel out of nowhere for Brittany because her plot was about like not being herself and then to suddenly be like I'm here if you want me well yeah. also we I'm myself seen her when I'm with you yeah. yeah that was so, also crazy it we come out of nowhere. Nowhere. yeah Maternity we've seen leave. Santana mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like her progress with her girlfriend and like but Brittany, we really have no basis for. So yeah, we just found out about all this stuff like this episode. So it is. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of um, it's a strange one. Not bad, just strange. Yeah, it definitely felt like like we need to give the Britannia people something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was for sure because like classically, they want to couple everybody up all the time. So I feel like mm-hmm. they're always like, hmm, who? Brittany needs to be coupled up with someone to like wrap up her storyline it's just constant all the time yeah it, like nobody can be single but also no one can stay together <laughs> they've got to yeah. be constantly breaking up and making up the different combinations <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah but that sucks because so much of glee has been like infantilizing Brittany to the point where like <laughs> she failed her senior year and had to repeat it she was literally like writing on her test with crayon and all this stuff and it's like okay now she's this super genius which I mean okay um but then you're gonna go back to like giving her a romantic storyline yeah instead of something with more substance it's just like kind of exhausting because I felt like Brittany was such a like throwaway joke character for Mm -hmm. so long like to a detrimental point Like, like what's the one about like being probed by an alien or something like yeah. a sexual assault joke mm-hmm. and now that. we've come around to her actually having substance and yet now she's gonna like repeat old patterns and she can't have Santana right now because Santana has a girlfriend and like it just sucks yeah, yeah. reductive for the show's sake yeah again yeah because it is Brittany was just a joke character until like towards halfway through season two they're like I guess she'll be like a romantic lead yeah. You know, yeah. and then that just requires something different. And then so now they so that it just creates more plot holes because when Brittany's just a background character who lives this insane life, 
it's like okay whatever but like now we need to make it make sense Mm -hmm. and like her to graduate and like do things i don't know why they didn't just turn fondue for two into like a super successful like youtube show like that's why just let her be an influencer i think that would have been spot on like it just feels like they're playing it for jokes again that she's super smart because Mm -hmm. in this this episode like she's not doing the research she's being researched upon like that's yeah kind of mm-hmm. fucked up yeah 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 oh there is a fondue for two thing yes um, i loved that <laughs> let's uh we'll get there we'll get there let's do quinn the quack storyline quack quack <laughs> uh it sounds like cock because we hate it um <laughs> or pin i hate them both because pin. it because it was invented probably by an incel um so <laughs> uh Puck is like, I'm in the military now. Like, I'm cool. I'm living this legacy, whatever. Uh, and then he, he's like, I put my past behind me. And then he sees Quinn. Um, and it's like, oh my gosh, she still dresses like she's from 1957. Except um, <laughs> now she's wearing pearls all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like regressed Wade. Like, She's like super early Quinn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Caricature of early Quinn. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, love that. Um, and he's, so he's all like excited to see her. And then there's a tickle attack um, from I Biff. hate that phrase. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but that is exactly what happens. <laughs> oh, uh, God. A tickle attack. Ooh. From Biff McIntosh. Presumably the third. The third. (laughs) Definitely the third. (laughs) Definitely descended from racists. Um, Definitely. Yeah. His family planted the first Macintosh apple trees. Um, And so (laughs) every time you eat an apple, you get a nickel. Yeah, he gets a nickel. (laughs) Which makes me never want to eat a Macintosh apple. But Macintosh, they're red, right? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't eat them anyway. I don't like red apples. I don't like the way the skin tastes. Fuck a red apple. Fuck you, Chase Crawford. (laughs) character yeah. i don't have anything personally against chase crawford yeah she's dating nate archibald of gossip girl slash the deep from the boys yes mm-hmm. um that actor deserves better like he's a good actor and this role was like yeah <laughs> he's probably he's basically playing like a milder caricature of his character from what's from what you call it like from gossip girl yeah, like yeah, XOXO Bridgerton. Yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> so like, he's just rich. He's like, he's giving me Logan from Gilmore Girls vibes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so like that East Coast rich, like yes. yeah, old there's money. A difference. Yeah, it is a difference. Yeah. yeah, he's not nouveau riche. He is old money. Old money. Their ancestors exploited people. I suppose like the rich people in Los Angeles, they're actively exploiting people right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 He's like, <sighs> this episode is fading so fast in my memory. I know. I'm like, <laughs> we, I'm like, did I watch this a week ago? No, it's like a couple days ago. But like, <laughs> I watched what? it this morning. Like, I have no excuse. <laughs> he was like, I had to come because she won't tell me about her past. Like yeah. she says that it's not like it's so worth boring. talking about. So and yeah, but they want to together mother, for three months. I, I have to get yeah, to know mother. you. <laughs> <laughs> so Puck, Puck is right to call that out. He's like, you call your mother mother. mother? <laughs> that made me think of like uh, Vice President Pence who called his wife mother. Mo- like yes. ill. Oh, <laughs> like mm, ill. Yeah, no, yeah. Mm. so bad. It's made me think of that Jennifer Lawrence movie that I saw alone mm. in a theater in Boston and like the middle of the night yeah an experience i bet that one experience it's very confusing religious allegory um (laughs) yeah so then he's like they're meeting at breadsticks right Mm -hmm. quinn is there nice restaurant in all of lima (laughs) (laughs) because biff would never set foot in anything less than the nicest restaurant (laughs) in lima so confirmation the bread (laughs) thing is it (laughs) yeah yep yeah he doesn't even like weirdly like wipe off the table or anything he's not like garçon garçon that's you know snapping yeah that's (laughs) that's right yeah so then the the glee club d-listers are there um (laughs) that's a good way to put it it's like we don't have rachel we don't have mercedes um but santana mike puck and artie are there Artie uh, was there and I was confused. I was like, he's still a student. In what way would you be invited to this outing? 
Like, where's Brittany? It's a weird yeah. group. Where's yeah. Dina? Yeah. I didn't fully appreciate that. That's a weird fucking group. Where's Sam who Quinn dated? Yes. I would expect Sam and Mercedes to be there. Yeah, over Mercedes Artie. is there for the birth of her child, but yeah. the show doesn't remember that anymore. Let's, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. Chase, Chase Crawford's character calls them over. It's like, hey, you guys. Well, that's funny because apparently then okay they were all having dinner just together so santana <laughs> Artie, mike and puck but did i thought he invited them to get to know her because they were at a large booth yeah. oh true maybe so i took it as him just like spotting them from across the room but no, you're that's right. what i thought too because yeah. they literally were already in the restaurant like standing at, around or something yeah. waiting yeah. for a table i guess yeah i don't know i don't know it looked like they were at the bar but i just remembered they're too young to drink <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. this show really needed to do a time jump <laughs> so i know why didn't they time jump here i'll never understand that even that's season what... six they don't time jump when they should have it's weird yeah because that's what riverdale did and i think mm-hmm. it was a smart choice because yeah. now the actors you're gonna are treat just... them like adults make them adults it's yeah. yeah yeah you know like if unless you're really doing the college years but uh rachel's a broadway actress now so like exactly. they really were and not that just... is not a real college like <laughs> no. <at all. laughs> no not if, if she can get away with doing that and being a full-time broadway star, which we'll get to yeah. when they talk about that <laughs> yeah i'm glad they pointed that out that was, <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. uh so yeah all these <laughs> this, the weirdest group of glee club members sits down at the table with quinn and her new boyfriend biff <laughs> And they're like, he's like, oh, what was Quinn like? And they're like, you know, she was constantly surprising you. And I'm like, that is one way to put it. Yeah. Wasn't yep. that Mike who said that? I was like, Mike, yep. I don't think you've ever interacted with Quinn. You, no, he was just in the back of that choir room being like, what is Quinn doing now? That's what he is. He's just like, oh, shit. Okay. He's got like an elaborate diary. Where he's like taking notes on everybody. And that's exactly where my head went. He's just observing. Uh, yeah. Choreographing and observing. <laughs> and uh, you know, like, yeah, she had a skank face. She dyed her hair pink. She got a Ryan Seacrest tattoo. And Quinn is easily to be like, no, 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 no. They're just joking with you. But no one is like, the fuck we are. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like Mike. Like goes like, ah. and then uh, <laughs> that really worked in the visual medium. But you heard my uh. gasp. <laughs> um, and then uh, she's like, I need uh, some chapstick and some lady things in the car. So Biff goes to get them. But he was he very her like- purse in the car. Who does that? I know. That's, that's was a- this pre-planned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. Uh, but yeah, but he like, he's very eager to go get it, which I thought was kind of shocking because like they were yeah, getting into the meat of this conversation and he's like, oh yeah, sure, of course. And I'm like, I don't know if it's a good thing or if you're literally so bored that you just don't want to hang out with these people. Yeah, because he was texting during the toxic performance. Yeah. And they call him out because he's like, oh, you were great. And I think Mike was like, dude, you were texting the whole time. And I'm like, Mike is out here to ruin this relationship. Yes, Mike's <laughs> yeah. like, I see him and I hate him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because because April, she actually first calls it out. It was like, oh, what does the boyfriend think? So like everyone is clocking this guy. Yeah, they're like, no, no, no. Um, so then and, and she says like, he's really busy because he's what? He's president of a secret he, society. He's, yeah. and he's captain of the water polo <laughs> water team. Bomba. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, this guy fucking sucks. <laughs> I can't. Like, you're making it worse. He's but the worst. But is he better than sleeping with her professor? That's a loaded question. You know, because like, she could be a trophy wife with him. That professor wasn't going to leave his wife. Mm, and then when true. Biff divorces her or something, she could get 50% of his old money. When's like string yeah. of self-destructive tendencies at this point? Like she slept with Santana, she slept with a professor, now she's with Biff. Like oh, this girl just needs to be alone. Yep. And mm-hmm. figure her shit out. And yes. that's been her this yeah. whole time. Like she's constantly looking for like Honestly, someone else to I'd argue her. that everyone in the show needs that. They just yeah. need a and few therapy. years to be alone and lots of therapy <laughs> while they do therapy. it. <laughs> and just like figure themselves out before they yeah. like go into a relationship but glee's like no everyone must be in a relationship or just getting over a relationship that just ended five seconds ago before they go into another relationship 
and they're always committing so hard to people too. Like it's not just like, let's casually date. Like it's like, let's get married. Marriage. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, even in this episode, like she's talking about Biff is like, I could be set for life. It's like, ma'am, you don't know this guy. You've been dating three months. <laughs> three yeah. months. Yeah. It's very, uh, it's that vine, the um, cool of cool for the summer where it's like Danny Gonzalez and he's like, love one another or something, mm-hmm. kiss one another, like, die for each other. other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, it, she, and also like, they're kind of playing into that trope of like women go to college to find husbands yes. thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that because she's in fucking that. Yale. Like she's at Yale. I think she's studying theater, maybe. I think so, right? But whatever. Oh, yeah. She's at Yale. Like she's got her own shit covered. I want a scene with her and Judy. Judy for Bray. Love Judy, Judy for Bray. Me Miss her in the scene. Um, yes. and she's like, you know, honey, that's what I did when I went to college. I ended up with shitbag Russell who kicks yes. you out. You know, you need to, you know, find a good man and work on yourself, be self-reliant and then find someone that like, you don't need for financial can support. Handle, yeah. Can handle yeah. your independence. This scene is in the glee boot. It's there. Like yeah. there. <laughs> yes. She's curing me. She has to cure me. <laughs> She's drinking Chardonnay. Like it's happening. But like responsibly, because there's a lot of stuff that goes into curing meats. Yeah. True. Um, so yeah. Uh, so she's like, yeah, I could be set for life. This is Philadelphia mainline society. Like in Phil- Philadelphia story with Grace Kelly. Um and you know we're uh like i need to project a certain image and that's when mike is like oh oh my gosh (laughs) yeah he has he has opinions about quinn's life he's like we because he's got that diary like b said i think you're right (laughs) yep he's like i think that quinn should really go to therapy and just be by herself for a few years yeah um I really I love how like the fact that she got pregnant is a scandal not that she tried to steal a baby because to me that's the and most also scandal. and also the tattoo like that's what he was most upset about yeah. the tattoo, the tattoo. And the, it doesn't and make the any fact sense. that her baby might come back and try to take his money specifically yeah it's like that's a new low yeah because Sorry, that's fucked up <laughs> because then she's telling him she's like you know I'll tell him in my own time so then she's telling him by the buses you know, where you have relationship conversations. Which is also, <laughs> where are they dumpster. going on buses? Why are they by the buses? Um, Like, if me and Rafa are having a conversation, I'm like, okay, we need to drive to the public school. <laughs> We're not by the buses. <laughs> it makes uh, sense. It's the most private place on earth. Yeah. Um, we need to confront my childhood fear of school buses as a homeschool child. <laughs> uh. Well, now that's an interesting topic. I would love to dive into it. Um, <laughs> it's pretty brief. It's just, I always had, I'd see a school bus and I always felt like they'd be like, why are you not in school? And they would take me to the school and I'd have to like take a test to do a presentation and I wouldn't know what the class was. I like oh, would be lost. Interesting. So it's less about like the school bus itself, but the symbol that it represents. Yeah. Taking mm. you to a, a place you'd be a fish out of water. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's interesting, yeah. legitimately. So, but also, uh, school buses are terrible. Yeah. We are real bad. Yeah. Um, no seatbelts. Nope. Big nope. hazard. But also, the seatbelts themselves would be hazards because kids are assholes. So, <laughs> you know seats what? are so small. <laughs> so, quick note I rode in a school bus last summer. Yeah, last summer. My dad got remarried and Long story short, a school bus was chosen as our <laughs> our vehicle of choice to get us from one place to another during the wedding. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> good family drama. Um, but it works out because, like, his wife is a teacher, so it's, like, kind of, like, a funny joke. Uh, but those seats are super small, and, like, I just, it was so deeply uncomfortable. Yes. Because so they're made for children, but they don't account for the fact that children grow. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like there are children taller than me who would be suffering in those seats. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just rode in one this last weekend. So I'm so glad we're talking about this because it was traumatic. I was like, my 30 year old back cannot take this lack of suspension. Well, every single bump, people were like 
airborne <laughs> off the seats. <laughs> yes, just when we would right into like your tailbone. Bounce. Yeah, I was like, this is not okay. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I threw up all over my friend oh, in no. the school bus. Nice. Yeah. Poor, I got poor punched thing. in the face on a school bus. <laughs> oh, the horror stories are coming out now. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway. And I got in trouble for it. Anyway, let's let's not go there. It's I should really just go to therapy for that. Sorry, yeah. guys. I just went through a face journey. <laughs> <laughs> Visual medium. No, okay. This is an important question though. Was the person who punched you a, a male? No. Okay. Oh. Because no, okay. I could see them being a, like, what did boy? you do to provoke him? Oh, interesting. Because That's... I was going to say, if it was a boy, that person would have gotten in trouble. But no. Honestly, yeah. what happened was just like a misunderstanding. And like, there's something. I like, thought something was the air, but it was your face. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> what had happened was, <laughs> I got out of it's one of those situations where like, like in an airplane, you either wait for the people across the aisle from you to get up first or you get up first. Right. Like it was that weird thing. It was like her little brother wasn't getting out of the seat. And so I was like, okay, well I'm going to go. And like, I'm in like a giant coat and my big ass backpack. Cause it's winter in Ohio. And his sister thought that I'd cut him in line. And so she decked me in the face. So there's like something nice about like the fact she was trying to stand up to her brother, but also she punched me in the face without understanding what's happening. I feel like, yeah. She also oh. stole one of my Beanie Baby dolls. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> she sucks. That, yeah, because yeah. that's a very disproportionate reaction. It's one thing to yeah, stand up to your brother and be like, yeah. hey, you, you cut him in line. But it's like, yeah. uh, you cut him in line. Good thing I brought a chainsaw to school. <laughs> <laughs> you need to die today, bitch. Like, well, also, there's no etiquette on which side of the aisle gets to go first. Like, there isn't. No, nope. yeah. It's just like a first come, first serve, bumping yeah. into people. Just anyway, keep it moving. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> you were wronged big time. I'm <laughs> so <Wrong>. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Let's add her to. I'm I'm considering writing a list of enemies only for fun. <laughs> She's on <laughs> there. Only for fun. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Um, so they're at the school buses. Um, and violence mm-hmm. has happened here. Um, yeah. So he's like. You will walk around like you're freaking snow white. Um, and I'm Except like, you're a slutty little slut bag. bag. Oh, yeah. yeah. Something little slut bag. Yeah. And she's like, big mistake. And she, she grabs his grabs nose, his which nose. was weird. <laughs> but I loved it. I, she just like pulls so it and he's like, oh, oh, am I bleeding? And then Puck is like, we can't have yet. a woman resolving her own problem <laughs> um, i am in a man in uniform i need to beat the fuck out of a man who could sue me um yeah that's that's really good point. That's fucking dumb. Yeah, yeah because like that is like i feel like anyone would be like okay just call this woman a slut bag yeah she's gonna pull your nose but like oh this random man that you've never really met just comes and beats you up mm-hmm. yeah punches mm-hmm. you and tosses you like into the dumpster yeah, and oh. Quinn is saying, hey, stop. Not because she's like, I love Biff, but because she's like, mm. this is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you get into juvie, say, bitch. Hey, stop, you're, you're hurting him. And I was like, mm, I don't care if he gets hurt, but this is just an idiotic, <laughs> like, why are you being this way? Like, think yeah, about what you're doing before you attack someone. Also, he actually... So if this would have gone to trial, I don't know if anything comes out of this, probably not, but he would also be like court-martialed. He would be kicked right yeah. out of the Air Force. Yeah. Yeah. That's assault. Mm, like, yeah. yeah, and you know, Biff sucks, but did he get Quinn super drunk and coerced from having sex or did Quinn willingly enter a relationship mm. with him? Now that's a question. Yeah. Anyway. So he throws Biff into the trash can. He's like, you can stay and help him out. Or you can come with your real friends in the Glee Club that haven't texted you in months. Um, (laughs) That's also a good point because we literally talked about, was it last week or week before, how Rachel and um, Quinn had like tickets to go see each other. And I think Quinn used her ticket to come to New York to have that intervention. Yeah. And then Rachel's clearly never used hers. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Like, Quinn should not be with Biff 
but Quinn deserves better than what she gets. Um, I was mm-hmm. so upset by the scene because I wanted to see, I wanted to see how it would end with Quinn actually taking control of the situation and like mm. grabbing his nose and Great how Vic would have reacted to that. And if he was like, a, like, you know, a baby and curled up on the ground because someone tweaked his nose and mm-hmm. like, I feel like there's more comedy there. It would have been funnier and or, filling. Or like even social commentary because she could be like, oh, didn't you tell me you got like your first BJ when you were like 12 or something like, because boys say stuff like that. And it's like, wouldn't that make you a slut? Like, yeah. because mm-hmm. Quinn as a character does call people out on sexism in the past. Like she would do that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. And then she could be like, yeah, I was saving myself from marriage but until someone got me super drunk. Yeah, yep. I mean, <laughs> it's just, there's so many different ways to handle this scene. And they're like, no, we have to have Puck save her, quote unquote, uh, so that she'll fall in love with him, get back with him and realize that she deserves him. And I'm like, oh. So, you know, our friend Brittany is a big Faberry shipper. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was, I was thinking about this episode and I was like, you know, I think I get it. I think, you know, I wanted Rachel with Finn. I mean, they were a mess, but they were aiming to assess me. But, like, I don't really like anyone else for Rachel, and I don't really like anyone they're giving Quinn. And I'm like, Mm, I could see them together. That would be kind of a cool resolution of, hey, we were kind of, like, rivals in high school, but maybe as adults, we, like, find something in common. And, like, our shared history and the things that we went through, like, brings us close. Yeah. It'd be so good. Beautiful. Yeah, like, and... I like both of those, not all the time, but in general, I kind of like those characters. And so I could see, I'm like, that would be like a happy ending. Um, mm, totally. I like Rachel with Quinn because I think Quinn like humbles Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And boy, like does she need that. Yeah. That's kind of the only person that ever made her kind of feel insecure or like yeah. she needed to, to yeah. I mean, not that that's necessarily a positive thing, but I do think it made a different side of Rachel come out. And same thing with Quinn, like she was so jealous of Rachel. And like, I think that it was like actual competition. I don't know. Quinn's whole storyline has always been like fake competition almost. Like she was always mm-hmm. like fighting to be head of whatever, but it's like, you don't have any competition. Like you are the prom queen. You are like the most popular girl in school. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I love that. I think that would have been great. Yeah, but they were too chicken to do it. I they were. Yeah, that's we are that's really what it was. They're too chicken. Yeah, they can't have their main character turn out to be a lesbian. We already yeah. have the lesbians. Exactly. Yeah, no more um, lesbians allowed. So yeah, um, so then they're looking at Finn's uh, jacket or yeah, ja- no, it's his football jersey, and they mm-hmm. and we kind of get some closure with the fact that Quinn was not at. Right. the quarterback yeah. episode um and he's like do you think we forgave us and she's he's like yeah you know we set him free rachel was his soulmate so it's again like when it's kind of being more mature um and like being like yeah like stuff happened but we all grew from it because that was like sophomore year mm-hmm. um, yeah so like uh and then he's like you know i love you um well we did forget the most important thing that happened was the recreation of keep holding on. Oh, oh, I forgot before. That's what happened. That's before the, the, bus the scene. buses. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So they're in um, the, they're in the auditorium and Puck starts singing, keep holding on my favorite song about a dragon. Um, <laughs> and uh, but like, it actually is kind of my favorite Disney song. <laughs> I I can't after they literally used it in both seasons of the Glee project mm. and oh it was so cringe it's now it's just a cringe song for me especially now having seen Aragon again <laughs> um but they're like I just remember when that movie came out Avril Lavigne was on like Good Morning America singing it and the host was like <laughs> do you do you believe in dragons and it's like the dumbest question yeah. and he's like <laughs> She's just like, yeah, I believe yeah. in dragons. Just like, she would. You can just see in her face, just like, yeah. um, the fuck? <laughs> She's like, we have them in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're singing, keep holding on. And the original Glee Club members get up there and they're doing the choreo. 
So it's one of the new directions first. We walk, we turn, we walk choreography numbers, iconic. Um, yes. And then suddenly there's, it's not seen, but suddenly everyone is doing it. We don't see them get up, but suddenly they're there. Um, and Quinn is like getting emotional. And I actually, this is the other song that I think they were using their history for good. They are using this song, they were connecting it with the emotions that Quinn had when she first heard it, taking her back to like that really scary time in her life and everything she's been through and how that's made her stronger than she was. Um, right. And how she deserves someone, not Puck, but someone who knows and respects everything she's been through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and like Diana Agron, ugh, give her that Emmy, she's acting um it was great um and so yeah then we get to when puck's like yeah i love you um and then she doesn't sings this doesn't that part happen in the locker room right yeah the i love yeah. i was like that's a weird place to say that but okay yeah why is this adult woman the men's in a room. boys locker room right it doesn't I matter felt, if you were a former student i felt also same thing with puck in college when they'd have sometimes like local schools or like they have swimming classes rent like the pool but like so in right. the locker room where you are not clothed there's suddenly like children next to you also mm. not clothed and I'm like I never I don't want no like I try and get out yeah. like as soon as I could like like I know we're all just changing but they're also little kids so they're like running around but like mm -hmm. I don't want to be seen yeah, it was like, it made me uncomfortable. Seems like a like, weird situation. Yeah, so I'm like, imagine Seems being like a like, weird place to put his jersey. The locker yeah. room, yeah. the smelly yeah. boys locker room. Like y'all didn't have anywhere else. Yeah, like, like there's there's like a hallway. Um, yes, the coaches like gallery office or something. Or yeah, something, anything. anything. Yeah, a oh, trophy case. They got trophy yeah. case somewhere. Like imagine being an insecure like 14 room. year old boy who has to change in this public setting for the first time and then suddenly this beautiful <laughs> woman dressed as June Cleaver comes in <laughs> <laughs> and this military adult. Um, yeah. He won't take off like, the stupid uniform. He won't fucking take it off. My yeah. brother's in the Air Force. I've seen him wear his uniform twice. <laughs> yeah, it's not a thing that they wear all the time. Like, yeah. it's, Once it's... was when he graduated from basic. The second yes. time was in a formal military ceremony and he has uh -huh. never worn it otherwise because you don't. Yeah, Lead no. characters, if they have a uniform, they will wear That's it at all, all times. Wear. Exactly. Yeah. You are a cheerleader. Exactly. Hey, mom. All you wear. <laughs> extra budget for the household because you need to buy me clothes this year yeah just wear this <laughs> and it's dry cleaned paid by the school so it's fine yeah i always wondered did they have five u ten uniforms or did they no. just wear the same uniform every Please day Different like shit. <laughs> yeah no that's, that's actually why she's so point. bitter and racist all the time exactly <laughs> she's like i shower but the smell is still here you can't get it out of the polyester <laughs> God. oh yeah so uh so gross yeah, so he's like, I love you. And I just, I'm getting vibes of the, we're never getting back together. I still love you. And I'm just like, I can't, this is exhausting. And that's me, yeah. I'm Taylor. I'm like, I can't, this is exhausting. And then she like runs after him and it's like, wait, and kisses him. And I'm just like, Quinn. In the middle of the hallway, these kids have to get to class. She's running <laughs> through them, pushing them over. In it's like, ma'am, ma'am. I'm just like, who are these people? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just like, Quinn. But like didn't they graduate two years ago a year ago i don't know what time it is in my own school year i'm sure there's a ghost pirate or a tree she could date like anything other than puck like, maybe a lighthouse maybe a lighthouse, lighthouse. <laughs> you know, maybe a lighthouse um, so like oh i just hate this and then they're they're kissing um so like I remember seeing this on a li BuzzFeed list of TV storylines where the woman ends up with someone who sexually assaulted them mm. and this was on wow. there and like you don't always sometimes you forget that but like you're like oh we yeah at this show we never forget that we yeah. always bring that up anytime there's like a positive relationship between them it's like yeah but this also happened and it's never been properly resolved and also the show is forcing them to be together yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have loved if he was like preaching at her and she was like, hey, you know, I've really thought about that interaction. And like, that wasn't okay. And like, you really <laughs> never call me again. My life. Yeah. 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 Yep. Like, I don't have a relationship with my father anymore. And like, I guess that's good because he was scummy, but like, yeah. But yeah. 
like you can't bring that back you know and then you slept with the woman who adopted our baby who's also our classmate's mother who also is the queen of fucking Arendelle like who also <laughs> literally was a teacher at the school at that time yeah yep. the show it just like conveniently forgets everything that has happened and it's just like no they belong together their end game yeah they didn't even get into like Quinn being in a wheelchair having no. a car accident <laughs> Imagine if that was the thing trying that, to sell her baby. <laughs> that what's his name was like, what you were once partially disabled. I'm sorry, we cannot be together. Like, imagine that. <laughs> He's like, so you were partially disabled. And okay, correct me. The song you chose to sing was I'm still, <laughs> I'm still standing. standing. <laughs> He's like, that is unforgivable. I can't. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, we've talked about this so long, but like it does make me mad because like they could have given Quinn like literally anything else as an ending. Yeah. Like she's like, I'm a hippie and I live in a commune. I'm a cult leader. Um, <laughs> cult I'm a leader. zookeeper. Like anything to be or, like, you know what? Good for you, Quinn. And she literally could have been like, I'm at Yale. Yes, I bring this boyfriend back. I realize he's not good enough for me. I realize Puck is not good enough for me, no matter how much he tries, because yes. we have this talk yeah. about what actually happens. And then she's like, you know what? I'm going to be on my own. I'm yes. going to do my own thing. I'm going to fix me. You could even, if you want to give Puck some sort of like redemption, basically what they're trying to do, she'd be like, you know, Puck, I forgive you for what happened. You need to work on it. And you need to think about how you treat the people in your life. Um, because I'm not going to hold on to that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to forgive you, but like, we're not going to talk, you know, like yeah. I'm going to move on with my life. And then, you know, in the finale, Quinn, Maybe she has some husband, like a kid, but like, you know, good for her. Like, it doesn't need to be a storyline. It could just be something that happened to her later in life. Because yeah. you can mm -hmm. date people you didn't go to high school with. You I don't can. know why. What? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know why no one's storyline in this show is, I went to college and I got my degree. Like, literally no <laughs> single person yep. actually finishes their college degree. I'm like, that's what y'all should be fucking focused on. Not all this other shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. Also, the weird thread with that storyline was like, Puck is like, you should hold on to your past. And she's like, I want to move on. And I'm like, let her move on the way she wants to move on. Yeah. But also like, if we're talking about like holding on to the past, like let's talk about what happened then. So like yeah. it yeah. literally is like they totally worked around that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was that was the strangest line because I have yeah. never heard any anyone say hold on to the past. Well yeah. like it's like never. yeah you know be connected never. to your ancestors in Gallic France quick. Or like oh, remember like like where you came from like where you started and now you're here yeah right? like, like right. started you from know, the bottom now you're here but not but that line specifically is so hold, weird hold on to the past keep holding on yeah well <laughs> on the past keep holding on to the past do not no. grow as a person it was it's just supposed like, to be song tie-in that was it <laughs> it's supposed to be like hold on the song the Avril Lavigne wrote about this blue dragon is supposed to be like when you're going Sahira. through difficulties you hold on, you hold on, you push forward. Mm -hmm. You know, something she brings into her song about Lyme disease, Head Above Water. Um, but like that, so that's not what the song is about. The song isn't about hold on, live in your past. Like it's like your past informs who you are, but like look to the future. And yep. Quinn should really be telling everyone in this Glee Club, like, hey, we have great futures ahead of us. Let's not yeah. dwell in our past. Um, she like, says that she cries when she hears the song because she had forgotten it. So it wasn't <laughs> a very though, memorable number. Yeah, yeah, that was, I mean, arguably one of the big pivotal like moments in season one, because that was like when she was getting kicked out of her house and all that stuff. Yeah. And they all sang it to her to be like, we're going to support you in this yeah. pregnancy, even though it's all fucked up. And like, that was like a turning point for her relationship with the glee club and like deciding to keep her baby and whatever mm -hmm. and she's like i'm crying because i didn't even remember that and he, so i was just like what? yeah it's it's almost like the show because we don't even other than like her talking with chase she doesn't talk about the baby situation at all yeah. so it's like she's 
which is like not a great coping mechanism to just separate everything into little pockets of your past and then push a lot of things away. Like that's not always great. So it's like, they are like, yeah, no, she completely forgot that she had a baby and she went through all that stuff. Well, it's they so do, strange. They did that in season two. So basically, so the writers That's are true. pitching this show and they're like, Quinn's super privileged. She's this beautiful blonde girl, you know, like she's never had hardship in her life. Here's the twist, crazy hardship. And then they're like, okay, season two, what goes on with her? She's this beautiful blonde girl. She's super privileged. Like they just, they. She was fat once. Yeah. <laughs> and she had yeah. baby fat once. Let me, let me be very clear. She had baby fat once. And, got a and nose her job. nose wasn't perfect, quote unquote. And she wore glasses. Yeah. And her name something. was Lucy, and they called her Lucy Kabusi for some reason that we still don't understand. Yeah. Probably, maybe she was a bitch. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like they couldn't. I talked about this on Life's But a Song. I talk about this on Glue But All the Time. That like they just they didn't develop the character. They only mm-hmm. wanted her to be this one thing, but mm-hmm. they did things to her that like make you change. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And then she still ends up the pretty privileged blonde yeah like yeah like mm-hmm. bananas like she carried a pregnancy to term as a teenager and gave birth like even if you got pregnant and like terminated a pregnancy that's still like it changes you that's still like and a then on crazy top experience of that she gives the baby away so she's not even yeah. going to be raising mm-hmm. the baby so that's a whole other thing that's going to change her it's like so many levels of character development that were just right for the picking and they but didn't then do she it has to deal with like the baby being in her life and like all this stuff like there's just so much so much yeah i would have respected it if she had been like you know what i've gone to therapy and i've dealt with this yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah. clearly she had not but <laughs> um like quinn's been through more than rachel okay yeah. you could argue maybe now in the show rachel yeah. has been through a lot because of court finn's death right you now um, but in like in high school, okay, people were kind of mean to her. By senior year, I feel like she was like no one was mean to her anymore. Um, no, uh, she was like, mean to everyone else. Like yeah. we had this she conversation had, a couple yeah. weeks ago too. It's like she was just a brat. Yeah, yeah, like she did not have. She had like normal hi- hardships that are relatable, and a lot of teens go through. But most teens don't relate to being kicked out of their homes. You know, right. like that doesn't happen to most people. Thank God. So like. Quinn has been through more than our protagonist. Yeah. And the, the most they can give her is this puffy creep. Well, that's what you have to do. If we've learned anything from the story of how Moana was created, they had to get rid of the pig in the story yeah. because the pig had a bigger character development and story arc. So we so- have to get rid of Quinn, essentially. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, instead of getting, well, not even getting rid of Quinn, we just get rid of all of her character development. Yeah. So it makes even less sense. Yeah. <laughs> Quinn is the pig in Moana. <laughs> but this is also so classic Glee in that, like, everybody had to have a romantic storyline in the end, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm remembering season six, right? I literally only think of like one or two characters who didn't have like a romantic storyline end. Um, Almost everybody got all coupled up so and were like happily ever after. Eight percent of the show's characters, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Which, like, oh, okay, I get. Especially when I was a young writer, I loved doing that because I read a lot of Shakespeare in high school, and that's what the Shakespeare comedy ends with. Everyone gets together, so I can even I'll forgive a season finale that or series finale that does that. Mm. But like the whole fucking show, the whole fucking show. Yeah, like they can never. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is like. This is effectively Quinn's ending, right? I don't think she's really featured after this. I think she shows up a few times in six, but like. Yeah, but she doesn't, I don't think she has like a real storyline after this. I think anytime she shows up after this, it's like her and Puck, happy couple shit. Gross. Um, I mean, don't quote me, um, but I can't think of anything else. So yeah, this is what. This is her quote unquote happy ending. She's 19 and. (laughs) Puck is, when is it? Did he go to college? Oh, I don't okay. know. Join the so here's, here's my thing that bothers me is he's like, ask me to stay here. And I'm like, why would she ask you to stay there? She lives in Connecticut. She's going to <laughs> Yale. What the yes. fuck are you talking about? You're in the military. In You're, in the military. That You're going to be put into a base somewhere. Yes. Around. Yep. Wherever this bitch is, he ain't leaving. Like, 
Not it's for just, three years. Does that it mean he's no going to like throw away, he's going to quit being in the military so he can be with Quinn and then not provide because he can't get a job and he well, didn't go like, to college? Cool. And it sounds like he kind of wants her to like quit school to be with him. Like that's yeah, what it really sounds like, like. Is that what's happening? I swear to God, if the next time we see her and she's like, yeah, I dropped out of Yale for Puck, I'm going to scream. Murder. <laughs> Hannah's like, podcast is over. <laughs> I'm like, guys, I cannot do it anymore. <laughs> it's like, it's bad, but it it might be even worse than like they're portraying it, right? Like just on the surface, like her going back to fuck sucks. But like the fact that for them to be together, one or both of them is going to have to be very unhappy is worse. So much yeah. worse. Mm-hmm. It'd be different if like suddenly it magically worked out, but he literally signed a contract. <laughs> She's paid tuition. <laughs> Did people ship Puck and Quinn? That's what I'm like. I hope not. So much of Glee's fan service. I'm like, were there people that wanted this or was it just Ryan Murphy? Well, we do know that people have written, written fan fiction of... Uh, jake puckerman and noah puckerman yes doing i did, stuff. I'm sure I did have to read that yeah so like wind zest i guess yeah so uh Fascinating. you know anything is possible unfortunately in this circumstance yeah but i just i feel like i don't think there was like a big like britannia had like a big fandom cling mm-hmm. had a big yes. fandom even finchel big fandom yes but like or people like i want quinn to end up with puck Cause that time he sang Beth at her, you know, <laughs> you know, what never lies. Um, number of fix on archive of our own. Here we go. Okay. Is Puck and Quinn. Too have many. 420 works. That's nothing. That's 420 That's not too many. Abso- but, yeah. You're absolutely right. But, and then Rachel and Quinn has 2,720. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're yeah. talking okay. about yeah. Okay. Yeah, a factor of like eight or nine between them. So yeah. Okay, it feels nobody a little better. This. <laughs> yeah, I feel confident that nobody wanted this. <laughs> yeah, I just hate, and we spent too much time talking about it, but it is really the only storyline I care about in this episode. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's the only one that's worthwhile, honestly. Yeah. Even even the whole like storyline, quote unquote, that is about saving the Glee Club, is like inconsequential to me because I was just like that I don't care about this has some stakes that we need to talk about Mm -hmm. yeah injustice in the saving the glee club it's like middle of the storyline still like it started in another episode and it's still not resolved in this episode so it's just kind of (laughs) like yeah we brought Kristen Chenna within to sing Razor Glass. There aren't any stakes. Like at all. Yeah. They're still singing in the auditorium and they still meet yeah. in the classroom. Like Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Ryder, who was supposed to quit, uh, won't get to have Glee Club anymore. Like Yeah. Marley, who was literally saying that she was going to quit, but was conned into staying. Marley needs to quit. Yeah. Marley needs to murder Mr. Schuster. <laughs> she that I would watch. Yeah. That's fun. Let's go Dexter on him. And so she's uh, yeah. Both of them. Bye. Yeah. Um yeah. She can make it look like a murder suicide so that she can't be connected. Yes. Plausible. Oh yeah. Plausible. Yeah. 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 Plan. yeah. Um so yeah. then uh yeah, let's talk about saving the Glee club because I hate the diva so that's going last. Um <laughs> So Will's like, yeah, Glee Club's over. You know, I'm just, I'm like just going off vibes. I don't even remember seats. <laughs> and then Christian Channel with April Rose is here and she's like, yo, I'm back. I had a mistress. I was a mistress and he bought me an island. And I'm a Broadway star. And didn't I sleep with some underage boys last time I was here? Yeah. Um, also gave alcohol, but also it was yeah. kind of funny. I think it was it Tina talking to Marley was like, <laughs> she taught me how to shoplift something me in my vagina. In my, in my yeah. vagina. Mm-hmm. And Marley's like, what? I was like, okay, that's actually really funny. Um, there were actually know, some it, really funny jokes in this episode. It's yeah. just, just, but why is she here? I didn't understand that. Because it's the April Rose Auditorium. So basically, right. like the plan for was for that she's gonna like continue paying the school, and in, in exchange, Glee Club would not be yeah 
but it's so solved. she doesn't do that until the middle of the episode yeah she spends the first part of her thing talking about where she's been she, they have fake champagne or champagne flutes or whatever uh, and she like, says something really nasty a couple of nasty things um is this where she says uh oh i bet you're gonna be a um a virgin forever to unique right yes yeah so, what the fuck is that about april what? Rhodes sucked this whole episode she was just yeah. like rude we've never been able we love christian chenoweth yes broadway's Stan. glinda the goddess of star and american gods a show i never watched um but not a fan in this um no. so yeah she's like yeah she called yeah she does that thing to unique and then she's like we're gonna sing one of new directions best songs raise your glass and i'm like that's not new directions and blank like that he's like the word like, no, actually no. saying that <laughs> yeah woman i've never met before in my life who's suddenly here and um, she but she's like oh i've always loved you i've had a soft spot for you and i'm like her note for prep school boys oh <laughs> see i thought it was specifically to blaine i must have missed the line yeah if uh, I said that, I'd be on that clip would be being replayed on Tucker Carlson right now. <laughs> and they're like, this is why we can't say gay around our children. Yeah. yeah. But because it's a woman, along. it's fine. Yeah. Did April suck this fucking much back in season one? Like she yeah. gave all yeah, yeah, she the slept kids, with Puck she and some of the uh, and Matt fine. and Mike people yep. at the school. Like not cool. She was hanging out in the boys' locker room with these underage boys Mm -hmm. uh she gave alcohol and got kurt addicted to alcohol uh she says some pretty racist stuff a lot she's not great but she's a pretty terrible person and then her musical was horrible so bad and she did an all-white production of the whiz which is person trading for hannah yeah Yeah. (laughs) yeah um but also I don't know if her musical was better or worse than Diana the musical, which is on Netflix. Everyone should watch it and mm. be in pain with me <laughs> and Helen. So bad that it's bad. One of those songs <laughs> is going in the glee boot. Is oh it fuckity, 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 fuck you dress? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I want to die because of that. Yeah, so then. But they do the whole song of Raise Your Glass and every other number they do. Yeah, they do all of Razor Glass. You're running around. The only part I really enjoyed was Blaine recreates when he, like, when they're, the Warblers do it, when at, like, the kind of, like, the, the disc scratch or whatever, he does, like, this little spin. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does that with Will. Um, I liked it infinitely less, but it was a callback. Um, mm. I'm going to be 100% honest. Guess who skipped through all of the songs <laughs> this girl one i did have to work so i was like trying to get through it but then also i was like i kept skipping i was like oh, okay should we be done i'm like i'm sorry they're on verse two are they doing the whole song and i did that for like pretty much every song this is so, so filler i gotta so turn you on to i have a google chrome extension that lets you like m- increase the speed of all videos so i watched it, most of it on 2x speed <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> Uh, yeah it was a game changer um I I will say I liked this version of raise your glass only because I feel like the lyrics fit the new directions a little bit better than the warblers because they're like all you Mm -hmm. underdogs you freaks like whatever like I never felt like the warblers (laughs) (laughs) they're not underdogs So, so I did like that but yeah and I'm a sucker for a group number but I didn't yeah. like all the alcohol references and stuff. I was like, yeah, Come she's on. like pulls out uh, a flask from her uh, garter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to my least favorite wedding tradition. Um, <laughs> yep, fuck that. The garter toss. Yeah. We but did not do pulling that shit up in my the wedding. dress in front of everyone, the weirdly looking for it and all the sexual innuendos and it's whistles. So gross. It's I'm going horrible. to do that at my gay wedding. Um, but because it. we'll be wearing pants you just have to take the person's pants off yes pants each <laughs> that's other. Fun. That's, i love it i love it but it's gonna be awkward because like you're gonna be like okay well i need you to take off the pants so i can get the girl okay well you're gonna be like, maneuvering <laughs> you, i can't wait is it just the one leg are you just gonna do one leg reveal? or 
Oh, like you have pants on one leg. Yes. <laughs> oh, interesting. So you just dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I interesting. See, yeah. I was thinking the whole thing was coming off and you just got to really maneuver and you got your yeah. shoes still on. I'm like, I always wanted to do this in front of my mother. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and my aunts. And yeah. Um, so yeah. And then, cause she gives Blaine and Kurt, oh. uh, a flask flask a raise your flask and uh because they're getting oh i hear you're getting married uh kurt here cosplaying as charlie brown right now um and she's like you know here's it'll reduce the sting of the wedding night sodomy, sodomy. and i was like what a fucking line i i just i don't know i don't even know what to think about it anymore and i'm like these people have had sex before with There's each two other references and a lighthouse. to gay sex in this episode that are horrendous. That's the first one, and the second one is when Brittany's like, "I just want to scissor you and play with my cat." Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's. <laughs> I just I don't understand why the show has to be like this, but yeah, that's a good point. They probably have already had sex like they to her did. she would In probably the, yeah. I'm saying, like, if story, she's yeah. looking at them she would probably be like yeah you've probably had sex before it's april rose of course she thinks that they had sex but, yeah but the whole point is but she's saying that it's gonna help lessen the sting as if they've never had sex before right i know yeah so it that's why it's like sense. it doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah it's just I'm it's like, also just like, why are you saying this at a school? Like, there are also, other people around in the classroom. They're going to be like, okay, I guess we're talking about sodomy. And Ugh. if you're, you know, it's not like this is Brokeback Mountain. If you're doing everything that one should do, it's not that painful. You don't need yeah. alcohol. You know, like, <laughs> it's, it's like someone's violently. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Like, and this is this understand. is Kurt and Blaine we're talking about. Like they don't seem like the aggressive grinder they gays. Just yeah, wanted to say, say sodomy. sodomy, and I'm yeah. like, good for you, I guess. Thank you for referencing that biblical story that's still oppressing me actively right now. Um, it's literally just <laughs> she's just like microaggression. I don't even think micro mm-hmm. is even just yeah. aggression, aggression towards every, yeah. every minority <laughs> in the Glee aggression. Club. Yeah, like she literally doesn't say shit to anybody except for the minority. And it's like, fuck you. Well, she sees well, so. (laughs) That's interesting. She really doesn't talk to anyone but the minorities. And then when she talks to Will, it's, she's mostly talking about herself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Um, Mm -hmm. So then, yeah. So then they're in Sue's office and she's like, I donated $2 million of my hush money from the strip mall owner mm-hmm. for the April Rose Auditorium to run the Glee Club. And Sue's like, oh, I'll get back to you. Okay. Um, the auditorium, $2 million. She donated that, what, like two, three years ago? Yeah. I honestly don't think that much of $2 million would be left. Yeah. Is because it that, $2 million is a lot of money. To but, pay for a whole auditorium? Yeah, thing? the auditorium, but also it's not just Glee Club performances. They are also paying for like musicals. the musicals and stuff and all the electricity that goes into that. And also like, even if they didn't do the big sets, they're just using it all the time. Like, I feel like I don't think a lot of that $2 million would really be left. Yeah. Like enough to cover probably another two years, but I don't know. I have absolutely no idea how much money goes into a large building like that that is frequently used yeah i live in you los know? angeles it's like three thousand dollars to rent a one bedroom for 10 minutes like i don't know how yeah. things work um yeah i don't know it's just like it felt kind of strange yeah i was like i was like why would you just assume that it's set for life like <laughs> it's two million dollars is gonna run out yeah uh, but the resolution of that point was excellent and i'm so glad they referenced it so they come back to it and uh sue is like actually the money is out and april's like what how and she's like because will schuster has been uh orchestrating private bacchanals the likes of which have not been seen since the reign of caligula (laughs) um 
fun fact, uh, Caligula's a uh, nickname that means little boots because he, as a child, he used to wear a little military uniform and everyone thought it was super cute. Um, uh, <laughs> but she's like, including a full jungle set for production of Roar that <laughs> only you are. Literally, only <laughs> for you. For literally yeah. just you. And, and of course, like, she's just like looking at these papers and or she was like, let me see those papers. And April's just sitting there dumbfounded probably impressed with how fast you went through her money because she would only wish to have gone through it that fast but like it's just so it is canon it is textual that will is like so that means seeing in the rain umbrella that wasn't a fantasy that that rain was coming down oh and that rain was expensive yeah <laughs> yeah and they didn't even use it to sing rain on me by lady gaga and Ariana Grande. waste <laughs> waste of april rose's money waste of taxpayer dollars waste of mike chang's time <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah like that's just so that is all real and so that because this was back in duets i remember michael being like i know what the budget for glee club is but it has to be a billion dollars <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's and, just like yeah two million okay so if you think about like so two million dollars i don't know i'm gonna say i'm gonna say it takes probably a couple hundred thousand dollars just to maintain the the just the the whole thing and then on top of that all the shit they're doing is just like because i mean we saw the the katie or gaga set that they did and yeah. it was just, Pres- i can never know the word proscenium the, like where the theater juts out yes it's like bananas i just i'm googling right now typical budget of a high school theater department okay <laughs> but this is not a typical high school I know, but just like to see for reference. Some context, yeah, because yeah. the average high school musical costs around ten thousand dollars. The school, the theater, or producing shows that cost anywhere from thirty thousand to sixty thousand. Okay. I did a musical also- for a lot less, but I also didn't have to rent my the play, which like renting a play is expensive. Yes, but also if you think about it, they held. How many sectionals and regionals there in that time? That shit's expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, duh, they went through two. I can't believe it was only six weeks ago that it had run out. Yeah. Like, okay, like the fog during Fly, I Believe I Can Fly. That's a believable high school budget. Like the roar set, though. No. They don't even do that on Broadway. They would, like, project plants. They wouldn't make <laughs> grass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay, so that was hilarious. Will should be fired. Um, yes. Yes. So he's mad at April. April's the one who's in trouble. Yeah. Oh, no, this is because she... So the reason why she's in Ohio, mainly, is because she's running from the the FBI and the SEC because she was so she got a private island from Bernie Madoff who uh you know was caught up in a a bunch of uh tax scandals and fraud scandals like what was this 2014 she was being investigated by the SEC and then she was like how could you but it's like excuse me I give you two million dollars i think all of us should be mad they should be putting on those colorful t-shirts sitting on those stools and putting windows media player in the background and singing true colors that would make it last forever yeah okay so then uh holly holidays there because there's a facebook group (laughs) and i I loved this part (laughs) of all the guests of glee club including like rachel's mom (laughs) They called Ricky Blaine's Martin that brother Mexican guy. And that Blaine's Mexican brother. guy. Is so <laughs> I very much thought it was about to be, oh, a Facebook group of women Will has slept with. <laughs> yeah, no, I honestly like kind of thought that at first. And, I, and you know, it, and I, it would have been even funnier. <laughs> and there's they're like including Blaine's brother and that Mexican yes. guy. <laughs> I can see it. It basically yeah. is. Um, uh, yeah, but and the- by the way, in canon, Ricky Martin is the Spanish teacher at William McKinley High School. Yeah, just today. say the Spanish He's teacher. There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that Mexican. That Mexican. Well, it guy. was April who was talking about a minority. No, it's true. 
Holly. So you got to make it terrible. Oh, yeah. Well, it was April. Oh, okay. Yeah, April like chimes in and says <laughs> the other people in the group. Yeah. So yeah. the Glee Club is closing and down the hall, the Spanish teacher is like, mm, okay. He doesn't show up. <laughs> he's like, mm, he deserves it probably. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's, I'm surprised he's still a teacher. It's like, yeah. I heard that performance of a little less conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Couldn't happen yeah. to a better guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then... Uh, Holly's like, you know what? This needs minions vibes. Uh, oh yeah. And she sings. Well, we all know I'm a basic bitch who loves pop music, but this is one of my least favorite pop songs. I hate I it too. Happy. Um, so what happens is, uh, they Rachel's like, oh yeah, I'm so glad you're here because we're gonna be singing all of the songs that we wanted to like redo and she's like that's a fucking dumb idea (laughs) (laughs) i was like thank you holly yeah i agree i just i love goop and i love i just sent hannah this instagram post today that was like gwyneth paltrow would consider returning to the marvel cinematic universe if it was a small role she could do in a couple days and i'm like that's gwyneth paltrow and glee she's like can i just like do a number but I'm also, gone. that was literally her role in the MCU for the past, like, six years. <laughs> so, like, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> Does Gwyneth Paltrow remember being in Glee? I don't know. <laughs> I would actually... Uh, anyone out there who ever gets a chance to interview her, please ask her if she remembers being on Glee. <laughs> she, I feel like she remembers Forget You, but not Hat. You think? Because she sang Forget You at the Grammys. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Glee launched that song into infamy like it did with several songs. Um, On the Glee wiki, it actually says that Holly was originally supposed to sing Dog Days Are Over. And then they changed it to Happy for unknown reasons. I think it's just because Glee is a cash grab for songs. And they're like, it's like the number one fucking song in the world. We got to sing it. Yeah. Money. Um, I don't know how I would feel about Holly singing Dog Days Are Over as it is you know no, yeah I think that really this suits also, her like vibe <laughs> this yeah this also feels more her vibe that she was like that's a dumb idea i'm not gonna exactly. do that mm-hmm. but yeah. also we need to very quickly talk about her new business ideal because being a substitute teacher was weighing her down because she was so good at it and people kept asking her back she's like that's not <laughs> the point so she decided to develop this pop-up history theater series where she would show up unannounced all over the world to give these <laughs> tiny lessons until she got kicked out I love okay. that though. Arrested so good. It. and kicked out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. I love she, that. She was being William Henry Harrison, but who I know from Parks and Rec, not from yes, history same. class. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yes. Cause he didn't want to wear a coat to his inauguration. He died like a couple days after from pneumonia. Yeah. I, I loved it. Cause those were well, some of my favorite things about the Holly holiday episodes were her little <laughs> Oh yeah, her substitute teaching moment. Mary Todd so. Lincoln lives in it for me. <laughs> no, like Holly Holiday is like a, their best like guest star character. Yeah, she's so fun and like yeah, she like moves the story forward enough without like totally uprooting things, but it's just kind of there, you know. Um, and so yeah, she sings. Uh, she slides in the floor on butter because yeah. Kristen or April buttered it for her. She's like, you know, I like to make a entrance. Is hola classe. Mm-hmm. um dueling go who um <laughs> and uh yeah she sings happy uh blaine gets a solo with her and i'm like have they interacted ever i don't think so um and then no. jake gets up and is like oh you called on me to dance how does she know jake can dance these people have never interacted she just <laughs> points him out and i'm just like hmm it was really lucky yeah yeah she could have pointed to <laughs> another Kitty pharrell then, song yeah. But with mm. Daft Punk. Yeah. So yeah, happy happens, I guess. Yeah. And then the Will takes the Glee Club into the auditorium and he's like, you know, Finn and uh Lillian will stay. Um, you know, to remind people that they're not even gonna know who these people are. And it, it's like, yeah, but like, you know, their legacy lives on in you guys. And like, and the, and Quinn's and Tanner are like, why are we getting emotional? Like, I don't like this place. Like, why am I feeling this way? And it, I thought that was actually a good scene. It was super cheesy, but that's I loved it. Yeah. yeah. There's a really intense uh, shot of Rachel crying. And I was just like, this has to be super emotional for Leah Michelle. Like, yeah. they're literally like 
directly referencing his memory. So, um, so it kind of like it serves both like the, his legacy, like Finn's legacy, and also Corey's legacy kind of lives on. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was sweet. And then April and Holly are drinking boxed wine. Uh, upstairs, they're like, okay, I know we got to finish our one, but we can't let that glee, glee club go the way of the dodo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're yeah. gonna do something and then april's like we're gonna save that glee club and they cheers um yep that happens <laughs> and b i am so sorry because we have one more story this has been a long episode i thought we were gonna breeze through this but we had a lot to say about quinn i thought we were gonna breeze through it too but um yeah i mean it is i think that's the one significant thing about this episode besides the hundred thing is that this is kind of quinn's ending so i'm glad we spent a lot of time on that because yeah. you, that was pretty fucked up yeah <laughs> and watching it i didn't yeah. like fully realize that until we started talking i was like oh that fucking sucked so <laughs> yeah um so okay rachel and mercedes are like i'm famous why didn't they, they didn't they make me a banner um, grossly underestimating high schoolers' ability to not give a shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I'm the most famous person this school's ever seen. Like, she may sing show tunes, she may write songs, blah, blah, blah. And then um, uh, they're like, I have to sit in the front row seat. And then Rachel uh, grabs it. And then Mercedes is like, okay, I guess I'll sit in the back of the bus. Oof. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, they're invited on fondue for two and, you know, uh, Brittany's like, Rachel, you, uh, are a full-time Niata student. You were full-time at a diner and you are a full-time Broadway actress. Do you think it's a little <laughs> irresponsible to spend an entire week at McKinley just because the Glee Club is ending? <laughs> she was like. <laughs> yeah, I was so glad <laughs> about so that. Because it's true. Thank you, someone, for pointing it out. Like, I like a human is capable of doing two things full time, I would say. Not this yeah, year. even so literally Rachel. not enough hours in the week. <laughs> to work full time at a diner 40 hours a week. 40 hours a week think, is a broad No, she works part time. Part time. Part time. But still, even then, up to 20 hours. Well, it depends. Part time could be 30. I, I can't. <laughs> I, 24, 20, times 7 24 times 7 is a number. <laughs> Six. Hey Siri. Uh, hey Kiki. What, what is 24 <laughs> times seven? 24 times seven is 168. 168 um, hours. Okay. So if you take away 40 of those for a full time job, that's 128 left. She and has then, a sleeping. <laughs> but we know that she only gets like four or five hours. Um, and then she just she can't. 20 of those for her part-time job uh -huh, 108 left and, and just then attending classes classes full -time. classes full-time would you just like work. say it's a 40-hour work week sure gotta be so another 12 hours in class hours. so how and many yet we are saying numbers i'm not subtracting anything i'm just I'm not I am. it's, it's okay <laughs> we're at 68 <laughs> hours she still has to sleep eat shower take care of her she has a long facial routine we know this <laughs> what is 68 divided by seven uh less than hey, 10 Siri, what less is 68 10. divided by seven <laughs> that's a math shit <laughs> 68 divided by seven is approximately 9.7142 Nine point so seven one four two. That many hours left in the day to sleep and eat and take and care of everything herself. else. Wow. I had a technically, I guess I feel technically like it's, it's possible. possible. And yeah. if anyone could do it, it would be Rachel Berry. All right. You know, as, it stands. No <laughs> myth confirmed. I, well, as someone who did like two, whatever two plausible jobs they say. in college <laughs> plus plausible. school, I did have a breakdown mainly yeah. because of mm -hmm. a pointless extra thing they added on to being an RA. I will call this out because they're not listening, but also I will, they deserve to be called out. Call we had these things called yep. ancillaries, totally mm. pointless. And we would meet and just talk about things you want to improve on campus. Mm -mm. Um, and I was like, it was the most stressful thing in my life. And I was a student with two jobs and it, it was pointless. We weren't getting paid extra for it. It was just this thing that existed that had to do with the mean girl. And uh, I hated it so much. And then the next semester, the grad student who was running it, I was a senior and I was like, he was like, he was like almost saying like, wait, is this like pointless? I was like, yes, it's pointless. 
and mm. I made a joke because they're like okay we have to do this event and I'm like cookies and connections each table has a cookie and there is different campus office and then we did that event because that's how little we cared I made a joke and real tuition dollars made my dumb joke that I didn't care about the reality <laughs> thanks Colin <laughs> amazing <laughs> Um, I work at a university, so this is all very. Yep, like, that's, this, that's how it goes. Yep, this checks that's out. exactly like, it. Okay. <laughs> Cookies and connections. I'm going to use that next time someone needs an idea. Well, and then Mercedes also gets called out in fondue for two. What oh, does yes. she get called out for? Because she's like, isn't it true that you actually can dance? You just, you just wanted to park yes. and bark. Uh-huh. Yeah. And she gets no comment. <laughs> because Amber Riley had just won Dancing with the Stars. Oh, mm. this time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Glee Wiki, for that one, too. That yeah. is so yeah. funny. Nice. <laughs> That's good because I was like, why would Mercedes pretend not to dance after Mr. Shu put her through booty camp? How? I don't know. But when she's in the Trouble Towns, like, she freaking she dances. dances. Yeah. Dances. Because it, so. the, the choreography so of the New Directions, I, I it's like very healing to me, but it is yeah. just step turn. Exactly. Step. Like, I <laughs> could turn. do that choreography. Like, it's very classic show choir. And then I would say Trouble Tones and especially like vocal adrenaline is more like neo show choir. Yeah. Choreography. Mm. So, yeah. Um, but somehow New Directions always wins. Um, yeah, we talked about that last week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're, <sighs> they do, they, they're that's... like, we're going to sing Defying Gravity. Yeah. The ultimate diva off. <laughs> uh mercedes is like yeah i'm gonna sing that which is like no you can't that's mine and kurt's and we're gonna sing it and then they decide that they're all three gonna sing it i'm like how is this gonna make this better because they're like then kurt needs to do in, something but then kurt's like not in the vote I yeah like, why did kurt kurt's, even sing it yeah like why is he even there like is it just know. because he was in the original and then yeah. i thought because they're setting up they're doing it you know obviously it's panning back and forth between the three of them and then i'm thinking those students had to sit through that song three, <laughs> three times, times in a row. Imagine doing that twice in a row when it's Rachel and Kurt, and then Kurt, like, you know, fucks up the note because know. whatever he uh, says, you know, he yeah. had to. An iconic glee moment, though. Iconic. Yeah. Three times in a row. I <laughs> could not. But no also, one even hit the high note. I was pissed. I know. What is that? Why <laughs> reinvent it if you're not going to do that? I, yeah. Penny, it just. Yeah, Sting to find gravity without the high note. It, Whatever. it was kind of interesting though I sat there because I was like oh April Rhodes Kristen Chandler she's just sitting there watching someone sing a song from a musical she was in <laughs> no, no. How, how fun that must have been for her like legitimately I was like oh that, that must be kind of like a fun experience and yeah. I do love like the core of Wicked is this positive like complicated but like this female friendship mm-hmm. and this show is this song is always taken and used as a diva off and mm-hmm. they cut out the I hope you're happy parts. Yep. And the, yeah. Yeah. Um, because, because no one that, hopes that the other person is happy. <laughs> hashtag Glee hates girls. Tina said it first and I will repeat it every episode of Glee Boot. Um, <laughs> so they, they're they singing it. Kurt is in his Charlie Brown inspired outfit. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was a choice. <laughs> it's a choice. <laughs> Uh, Kurt, he was like, what do I want to look like? I want to look like Charlie Brown as a gay sailor. Wait, is it a <laughs> reference to the fact that Kristen Chenoweth originated the role of Sally in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown on Broadway? Yes. Conspiracy theory. <laughs> yes. <Okay. Wow. laughs> it and just you know popped who, into my head. Who mm-hmm. sent Ryan Murphy that idea? The original Avril Lafine, not the clone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the but the clone club. was like hey you need to cover my song about a dragon again yes. so there were two Avril Lavigne sending messages in this episode that must have been really confusing <laughs> <laughs> no but the, the one signs clone like in parentheses and the other says the cool. original oh okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah um, they're all part of the Illuminati so they know it's fine um, I'm also an Avril Lavigne was replaced truther so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I saw a YouTube uh, video. It was very convincing. <laughs> Do you think Lee and Michelle can read? No, she cannot read. No <laughs> okay, way. Okay, what is this? <laughs> Absolutely not. You got to look it up. There's a whole okay. compilation. Okay. It's very I'm about to go on a rabbit hole tonight. <laughs> I think she can read, but I love okay. the theory. 
I think the evidence is strong that she can. The evidence <laughs> is pretty strong. I can't wait. I've never heard this. How is this never We've talked about it on the podcast? <laughs> I have brought it up. No. Was it if, one of your obscure references that nobody got? Maybe that's what it was. I was just like, oh, I don't know what that is. And then I just like blocked it out. But now I'm like, wait, there's a truther here about it. It's there's Everybody's something. about to learn tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, her Instagram <laughs> captions are probably pretty damning. Because she was- did just wear a green dress of the Oscars and the caption was green hearts. But then Miranda multiple- Cosgrove did the same thing. And I'm like, but I feel like Miranda can read there's multiple like there was like this thing where she was on Ellen and she was like cheating off of other people's papers and stuff like yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah what? references to tonight's book is it's very deep. compelling yeah yeah but her book yeah. is also like a journal <laughs> there's a great joke in crazy ass girlfriend where the character is like I read a book once is mo- it was mostly pictures it's by Lee and Michelle <laughs> <laughs> um okay so they do the diva off and they're gonna vote and there's scenes of rachel telling people to vote i think sam gets the line sam had like one line this whole episode yeah (laughs) so they're like flashing back and forth and they're like broadway pop music it's whatever and then uh they're about to vote and santana is like some words about my friend Rachel Berry. They're remembering this conflict. Um, and she's like, she is a horrible person. Um, there's not one person in this room she hasn't sailed down the river for a lead in a musical or a solo. And I'm like, true. And the other half, she doesn't remember their name. And then she's like, that's not true. And she's like, she points to Ryder. And I'm like, I barely remember Ryder's name. And I have a Glee podcast. That man is not memorable. Not what does she all. call him? Sorry Richard? To this man. She calls him Rick. And I'm like, Rick. sure. He could be and Rick. And then he's like, he like, he like whispers. He's like, His name's like, Ryder. Ryder. <laughs> and then we um, do not deserve to share the same name as an iconic Disney character. You're Rick now. Right. Rick. He deserves right, to be Rick. Now so we're gonna true. call him Rick. Um, it's, okay. it's very uh like Larry, Gary, Jerry. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um. Okay. He's so generic white boy name. What Sam said when he was in uh Rachel's, you know, Q and A, he said, "Why is it called Broadway if most of the theaters aren't even on Broadway?" <laughs> and I was like, "Now that's something, I guess." <laughs> And then he's also they made him write with his foot yeah and he did like, it they're like he's what if we're already left-handed in this episode <laughs> so go with your left hand for anonymity and she said what if what if i'm already left-handed that was right with your right feet. with your foot <laughs> also <laughs> quick reminder where's joe and sugar i know <laughs> this has <laughs> always been my qualm with glee they like don't like there's rules about high school you have to attend so many classes <laughs> where you are truant <laughs> like you can't just not be there but one week now is glee club a class or is it a club oh well, yeah no i was just listening to one of y'all's episodes where you talked about this i've <laughs> always been team both so much i think it's a I class think it is. it's a club it's i think they be. go there yeah. whenever they have a free period but somehow everyone has the same free period and then they're also there like after school, before school, between classes. I have no idea. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then uh, Rachel runs off to cry and Mercedes is like, you know, um, the voices of Puck or Quinn or Zintan, all these people fuel me to, you know, work hard. Sometimes it's even you. And Rachel's like, I hate to think I'm one of your high school ghosts. I always thought we one were like- One of your tormentors. Your tormentors. And I'm like, I always and thought- And I was like, bitch, <laughs> you tormented everyone. <laughs> She's you like, I always me. thought it was us against the world. When? When did that happen? Never. Like, I could buy that if she said that to Kurt. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Well, but what like, I also didn't get about the diva office, why didn't Kurt- kind of stand up for mercedes because he was friends with mercedes yeah they were like, like besties at one point i read Bust a, the windows through your car yeah i read uh 
one of those horrible glee confessions but this had a good point that said you know why didn't they have kurt rachel and mercedes move to new york because they were all actually friends and that would have made more sense than kurt rachel and santana well santana and rachel had a whole storyline at the end of season four so emotional yes are we mm-hmm. in the season three and a season three where yeah. they were like oh why weren't we ever friends like oh and like santana like puts up rachel's picture in her locker or whatever yeah and but then i think it's because naya and leah were like at odds that like they were like well we can't just make them yeah. best friends and we like that santana's a bitch so they just reverted right back but yeah there was a whole yeah episode long bullshit about how they were like why were we never friends it's the whole thing is so bananas but yeah i just like it doesn't make sense that kurt wouldn't stand up for mercedes yeah but also i guess kurt's right in the middle of santana and rachel which apparently they're living together again well okay let's be honest if you were roommates which you're not he's not anymore he's not roommates with Rachel. no yeah okay never mind what i said is null and void okay she makes a comment about someone shaves their stubble and it's not Lady Hummel. Okay. You know what? I didn't have to shave a lot when I was 19. I was, you know, but just because someone is gay doesn't mean they don't produce facial hair. And I, I do think the writers of Glee don't know that. Um, well, I 100% think they think, oh, no, that's you're gay. You don't make facial hair. You know? But And Ryan Murphy is like, then I must not be gay. Because <laughs> I'm sure he has facial hair. I think he, he does know. stubble. He doesn't understand it. It's just like something's coming out of my face. (laughs) How's it happening? I'm Um, homosexual. But you know, they're all they're all living together. (laughs) They're all living together again because like I think it's implied that it's because they used to be roommates. I've lived with Rachel. Didn't they say something about like that like they're living together? Because Rachel's like, I live with them. Yeah, I live with that. And well, I think it's a because you see Santana at work. Mm -hmm. Two of her jobs. I don't know. The whole conversation, the, the the way the lines are written just makes everything muddled. Yeah. Yeah. And just so like what Rachel was saying though about like that torment taking me back to high school, it actually made me feel for Rachel and the first time in the Rachel Santana conflict. It, like you get to see why Rachel is being so like irrational. Mm-hmm. Um, and that like we talked about that in our episode that we kind of see that's probably why. Yeah. And so that made sense. But when she's like, yeah, you and me, Mercedes, I'm like, remember all the racist shit you said to Mercedes when Mercedes mm-hmm. wanted a solo or wanted to be Maria in West Side Story? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Mercedes tolerated you, girl. Like, you were not friends. No. Yeah. No. It, and it, it, there's nothing to support. <clears throat> like, it was always Rachel against everyone else. And also, like, paired with the Santana Rachel bullshit that we have to go through like this is just like they're being super unprofessional because they're adults now and they're adults in the professional world and like easily like this kind of stuff could get out and they'd be like you're acting like a baby like this is just the same behavior yeah like why do you care what a bunch of high schoolers think like who's better why do you care that your high school club is no longer a thing why okay, I, I get because it's so pivotal for them, but it is weird how how they're exo- like how they're just like worshiping it. Like it yeah. is like a worship. It is weird. Yeah, I feel if like- my high school soccer team was disbanded, I would remember when my coach threw his clipboard on the ground and it stopped. Mm. And then I yeah, and I wouldn't come back. There's not a single single thing I was involved in in high school I would care if it didn't Neither, exist yeah. anymore. Like, nope. It's like, also because they aren't that far from it in terms of like, like when they graduated. Yeah. Geographically speaking. Geographically speaking, yes. Constantly. But I'm talking about time wise. And they, yeah, they're constantly going back. So like, I get it, but I don't get it. But it's also like it's stupid. <laughs> No, it's nonsensical. And like Shu's speech at the end did get me. Like, I know we already talked mm-hmm. about it, but there's one line I wrote down and I just noticed he's like, we grew up in this Glee Club. And that shit always pisses me off. They're always like, Glee Club made me a man or like Glee We're Club is where I grew up. And I'm like, no. no. Also, you have not grown, you grown, up. grown, Will. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is 35. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, none of these people grew up because they're still doing the petty same shit that they did Literally. when they were in high school. Yeah. yeah. They're standing there. They're like, all that matters is the approval of the people in this room. <laughs> And I'm like, um, exactly. You would care about Ryder's approval? I Ryder doesn't him. know where the clit is. <laughs> <laughs> Rick doesn't know where the clit is. Like, correct Sam, yourself. Sam thinks all black people know each other. <laughs> That's true. Oh. That was a thing we talked about. It's also, I just have to quickly say that I did laugh really hard when Ryder was like, who are you going to vote for to Jake? And Jake was like, I'm torn. One of them's black and one of them's Jewish. I was like, oh. I remember that, Dad. I loved that. That was so that funny. That was actually kind of funny. And it was funny, especially because that's the most development right Jake has gotten. Yeah, exactly. it's because totally being black It's like, Jewish. hey, remember that he's black and Jewish? Yeah, I just think of being that actor and like realizing that you're slowly getting written off the show and that's one of your last lines. And like, so got to make it count. Um, he it. it was great <laughs> yeah so they're like eventually they decide we're not gonna do this we're not gonna vote you know who cares we're besties um <laughs> but at that point it's too late because everyone had already voted and then there's and Will's it's okay like, you tied and i'm like it you know we're gonna tie. do this i want them to be like okay rachel voters stay on this side mercedes voters stay on this side yeah i want yourselves out yeah, because i'm actually surprised like they just like hug i'm surprised rachel wasn't like well now i need to see who hates me yeah, yeah. Um, because they also referenced prom queen that her winning prom queen was fake because she said the two people that you hate most in the world, me and Quinn, I'm like, her and Quinn are like friends, um, did it. Friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm like, uh. Did that really happen? Was that a thing that happened yeah. on the show? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was very so I must have just forgotten. Very, hey, here's something for Rachel, even though Rachel has never expressed any interest in being prom queen. Um, yeah, Santana and Quinn had this big like showdown about it. And then- Quinn won by like two votes or something and then they're like you know what we don't care about this let's give it to Rachel yeah okay I remember now so then I don't know that's (laughs) whatever I don't care we've talked for so long about this episode I'm I'm having a great time though I'm having so much fun I'm having a great time but I think I think you're right like this is the one I hated the most the storyline it was just it it was pointless why do we need this it would have been great because Mercedes has this line like oh you're I want to be super rich and famous and I want you to be rich and famous I just want to be more rich and more famous and that was like cute whatever um but I would have loved if they came back and they're like how much time we waste in this choir room fighting over solos and being yes. divas yeah. when we're also Actual talented. Actual closure. When we're also talented in different ways. And like, you know what? We Let's just give a round of applause to Tina for making all our costumes all these years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and also, uh, shout out to every woman in Glee for not being able to wear flats. Um, maybe Marley yeah. has, I don't know. <laughs> um, but like, they're all in these crazy heels. And like, just imagine being going to your high school. I guess I can't, like, I've never worn heels, but like, like, I'm going to put on like my best outfit to impress these 15 year olds. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is weird. Like Quinn chose to wear pearls. Why? You're like, around stinky teenagers. You're not gonna wear sweatpants. I get that. You're not gonna also, for Biff though, because I feel like for Biff. But also, yeah. <laughs> when I think about if I were to walk into my old high school, even at 19, I would be terrified of these children laughing at me for an irrational reason. Yes. But like, you're literally putting so much like attention on yourself. One for being there, and two for wearing pearls, wearing heels. Like you look ridiculous compared to these students wearing normal clothes you would wear like i would again blend it not be I'd in be a high school this, but i'd, I'd be wearing my like up and i would be <laughs> silent t-shirt jeans like t-shirt jeans sneakers that's yeah, what you'd wear because you like, stick the most out like normal, a sore thumb and they're like, gonna make fun of you behind your back because they're they're children and teenagers and they're gonna be like why is this a grown-ass person they're gonna be like sheesh you know, you know what's even worse i don't know when you is. go to a high school that wears uniforms so you can't blend in even if you oh, wanted be to horrible <laughs> oh they're like you yeah. don't go here yep <laughs> Not one of Don't us. forget your jacket new kid <laughs> moment <laughs> yeah <laughs> Shout out to Teenage Dream. Um, so they, yeah, that's the end of that shit. Okay. Uh, where are we? Tina time. 
Did she have any lines? Two. Two lines. Okay. It, one was a very what are we doing, Mr. Shu kind of line. And then I think mm. one was she taught me how to shot with me and my vagina. Oh, yes. Yep. Great okay, line, yep. though. Great, Great line. line. <laughs> um, um, so if I can think of any item I would want the least inside of me, I think meat would be up there because you eat it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's That's going inside you, you again. Eat it? Yeah. How about because it's full of bacteria and it's not cooked? Yeah. I assumed it was like lunch meat. Oh, that's not what I assumed. Interesting. I I don't know what I assumed. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) But well, here's the thing. Was it like packaged and put up there? I would hope so, because you're not going to get everything out there if you're just shoving ground chuck up there. It's going to, you're going to get like a yeast infection or maggots. Maggots. No, I've heard of people getting maggots in places because of using certain things as lubricants. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, That's a thing that I didn't know. Now I know and I can never forget. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's just like, wow. Tina, what a trooper. Yeah. Toxic shock syndrome. That's what I was thinking. I want to when you move a tampon in too long. If we did this in the Glee book, they'd all be like, oh my gosh, we're going to have this view off. And Tina's like, actually, she turns off the lights. (laughs) There's black lighting. She does the super bass, I still believe, mashup all by herself. And she makes them all sit and watch. (laughs) And then she walks out. She, they don't see her again until the graduation ceremony. And she is still in the Nicki Minaj wig at the graduation ceremony. Fascinating. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm obsessed. But she's texting Marley the whole time. Marley knows where she is because she knows Marley can keep a secret. Very true. True. Yeah. <laughs> um, shout out to the person who made the Glee confession that shipped Quinn and Marley. Okay. Um, <laughs> so... MVPs and LVPs. B. Yes. Who's your least valuable player? Um, I'm pulling it up to make sure I did not say it wrong. Okay. My least valuable player was April Rhodes. She fucking sucked in this episode. She was racist. She was homophobic. And she didn't even do her one decent thing, which was save the Glee Club. Maybe she'll redeem herself later. But for this episode, LVP. She sucked. <laughs> I, I'm going to second that. I'm going to jump off of that and say that she was the worst because of something that mm. I didn't think of, but Colin pointed out that he's mad at April for literally no reason. Cause like, it's not her fault that she's being investigated by the SEC Yeah, and he's the one that spent all the fucking money. So yeah. he sucks. He's like, you gave me hope. You spent all the yeah, money, bitch. You did the worst <laughs> thing you could is give me hope. And I'm like, there are worse things I could do. I'm literally quoting Grace. Like, <laughs> fuck you. Um, I'm also going with Shu because he, yeah. For all of the same reasons. Yeah. <laughs> so bananas. Yeah. The I, stuff that the writers let him get away with saying or like I, force him yep. to say. I'm recording him saying that line and I'm sending it to the Biden administration. Um, <laughs> and just say hashtag student loans. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh <sighs> Like, okay, initial thought was, okay, Rachel, because she said she calls that, you know, the lowly understudy. And I'm like, yeah. that is oh, unprofessional. That yeah. is rude. And um, then I'm like, Santana, you know, you don't need to put this girl on blast. Like, everyone knows what she's like. And if they don't know her, like, they don't need to have that in their lives. You know, um, you're just doing this to be a petty. Um, mm-hmm. And then I'm like, April. Um, yeah. The prep school boys thing. Oof. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, April. Yeah, I'm going with April. But who is your MVP? Okay, mine might be kind of a controversial choice, um, but I'm going with Santana because I really think her approach with Brittany and, like, her whole storyline with Brittany, like, she really cared so much and was very, like, it was just very personalized, I guess, to Brittany. You know, like, nobody could have seen Brittany and pulled her out of that place except Santana. Um, and I also kind of love that she read Rachel the Riot Act because <laughs> Santana cuts a lot of people down who I don't think deserve it, but Rachel, but Rachel always deserves to be cut yeah. down. So Rachel. I was not mad about it. I'm going to go with Goop, Holly Holiday, mm. because 
her presence was actually very refreshing. Hated happy, but honestly, like, I love that she called out how dumb the idea, the whole idea of the episode was, because it was. (laughs) Um, I love that she's like, I know we have to finish our wine, but like, we also have to do something, but let's finish wine first. I love that. I loved her essence. I loved her, her new business idea. I hope it, I hope it goes well for her. Went well, is going well still. I hope so. I'm going to go with Mercedes um, because I think that I really like the way that she handled Rachel in the bathroom when Rachel was having her breakdown. Um, and she was very kind about the whole thing. She mm-hmm. she definitely could have been terrible because Rachel kind of deserved that, but uh, she wasn't. And she was more mature, like more mature than she definitely had to be Mm -hmm. um in that scene although she was definitely not mature during towards the beginning of this storyline but i'm kind of overlooking that because i feel like she's allowed to have some negative feelings towards rachel yeah yeah mercedes is once again she's always the bigger person yeah she's Mm -hmm. always the bigger person and that ties a lot into what we expect of black women Mm. in society yeah that's true um they have to they have to like reach above and beyond to be treated at the same level as everyone else yeah um yeah i'm going with holly um, because I really didn't like anyone else. Yeah. Like, again, the only characters I care about in Glee at this point, Blaine, Sam, and Tina, were just, like, extras. Um, yeah. Brittany was back, and I guess I liked Brittany, but, like, she was fine, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Holly. Go goop. She came in. She shoved the jade egg up her vagina. I was say, speaking she of things conquered. not to shove up your vagina. <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk about music. Uh, we have Keep Holding On. We have Happy. We have Valerie. We have Razor Glass. Um, toxic. Toxic. Define Gravity. Define Gravity. There are so many songs. There's that, so like, many songs. They're so unmemorable. Yeah. <laughs> they really are. And they're supposed to reinvent them. And it's like, they I didn't. still don't remember them any better. In fact, I remember them worse. They're all like the same arrangement, even. I'm like, reinvent mm-hmm. what? Exactly. <laughs> it's like the same arrangement, the same, the same people. people singing. Yeah. Yeah. So you literally just listed off all of the songs, and I heard like two. Um, they went in one ear and out the other. Right, well, that's a like great sign. For, yeah. Just like the episode. Yep. <laughs> yeah. B, what was your least favorite song? Okay, my least favorite. Okay. Um oh, no. Oh, no. again. <laughs> they're the high note. They're the high note. Okay, you froze, but I think you're talking about Define Gravity. <laughs> God damn it. I, I had a different song choice at first, but I just changed it as we were talking because I think Defying Gravity has to be it for me because whether the high note, like you had three people sing it and not a single one of them did the high note. That's not a reinvention. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, they could have done like a cool harmony at the end with yeah. all three of them, but they decided not to. That would have been so cool. Yeah, that I'll second that because yeah, it's... It, they literally did the same thing they did before, but put in Mercedes, who does some interesting runs. But also Happy That's Sucks, because I hate that song. But I actually will go with Defiant <laughs> Gravity, because, yeah, it, it wasn't reinvented. Yeah. And that should be their bread and butter. Mm-hmm. Really. I'm going to go with Raise Your Glass. Mm-hmm. Because that where that was where April was at her worst. Um yeah. And I also really was put off by the empty champagne glasses. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's the dress line. <laughs> We're strange pop. <laughs> Weirdest thing. I was like, why did 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 they lose the budget on props this episode or something? <laughs> I just it really took me out of the scene. Just the empty yeah. champagne glasses. Damn it. <laughs> If the warblers could do it without props, they could have done it without props. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. necessary. Um, I'm going with toxic mm. because, like, 
Yeah, just I did. I hated like okay, let's watch these like nine nine. I mean, they're like twenty five, but like nineteen year old right. girls like be sexy, not even to seduce anyone, not to do anything, just to let's be sexy for ten minutes or thought three. Um, yeah, yeah. So toxic ten minute version of uh, one <laughs> Britney's version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yeah okay uh b what was your favorite song okay i uh okay so i i couldn't decide between valerie and toxic and i'll tell you why because you just said toxic was your least favorite and i respect that because you have a very good point um but the scene the original toxic with mr shoes singing it in the britney spears sex it's riot a good is reinvention. just so, just just Yes, everything in my body yeah. rejects that. So I did appreciate that it is a a um tolerable version Wait, of toxic. Isn't toxic. Trying to do justice to like one of the gay national anthems. Yes. Yes, exactly. Like they wasn't know they fucked it up. Toxic in front of a crowd though? Yes. Yeah, the with sex riot. Remember? They're like, oh, this is an assembly. God, sex riot. That's so yeah. much worse. It's so bad. And Where's their Jacob outfits were horrible. Israel these days. They had like the little hats. Little vest. Yes, fedoras. So oh, it was awful. So for that, I say toxic, and then I just say Valerie because it always hits. That's one of my all-time yeah. favorite Glee songs. They could do it every episode. I wouldn't care. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did fast forward it, but uh, mean respect. I, <laughs> I watched it in would double prefer speed. Valerie. I actually watched more of Valerie than I did anything else. Like it started i was like okay and i fast forward a little bit and then i saw like britney was getting up and dancing so i watch it basically from there on so yeah. i watched the most of it but yeah it's it slaps it's not different from the original but i think yeah. like we kind of talked about how it does move the story along and actually it does end up kind of mattering so right um i'm also gonna go with toxic because i sang to it <laughs> that's usually a good sign um yeah. Yeah, and I really hated the costumes. I hated the costumes, but I feel like it's a good cover. And I do kind of like that it was uh, Quinn and Brittany and Santana, which was like, they were a pretty toxic threesome when, <laughs> you know. Point. That's a good point. <laughs> In multiple ways. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I feel like, if they had somehow like created if the costumes were different i think it would have been great it was yeah. it was yeah still my favorite mediocre performance during raise your glass <laughs> there is a moment where like queen britain santana like get on the steps and they do like we're going to do this moment and they do like this like little dance together this like whole unholy trinity dance and i'm like just imagine yeah. being those characters like oh my god okay we're gonna do this thing get on the steps Turn. We did it <laughs> with the Anoli Trinity. Um, okay, uh, my favorite was "Keep Holding On" because I knew it. It's your favorite <laughs> song about a dragon. My favorite song about a dragon. It is like my favorite. Is it my favorite Glee song? I don't. It's up there. Oof. Yeah. Um, not this, this version. version. That's a big question. Okay. The other yeah, version, right? Version. Yeah, okay. with Finn and Rachel as the mm-hmm. leads. Um, yeah, because that was like a big moment in Glee and it mm-hmm. meant a lot to Quinn. I wish anyone else sang it. Um, Tina <laughs> Literally sang anyone it. else? Um, a wood nymph, maybe. Um, <laughs> so, so, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking Sue or something. Sue. <laughs> Sue you know what? I would take it. That would be an interesting, it's like, she's singing this because she sees the route that Quinn is going down and Sue's mm-hmm. like, no. You gotta keep holding on, but look for it. We love dragons. <laughs> <laughs> She's dressed as a dragon. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to put it together, and I was like, dragons. You know? Dragons. They're all like She's dragon outfits. Dragon. They have dragon puppets that Blaine made. <laughs> oh no, puppets! Oh, perfect. <laughs> all right. Um, B, thank you so much for coming on. This was so much fun. You guys, thank you so much for having me. This was the best. It felt like therapy. I feel so like light now. Yeah, we'll we'll send you the bill and uh, okay, perfect. Uh, uh, where can in the mail? Keep, don't worry. Where can people find you and Glee on the Rocks? 
Yeah. So um, we're at Glee on the Rocks on all the social medias, wherever you want to find us. Um, we also have a Patreon page where we do like mini episodes. Um, so you can like, you know, literally pay for a month, listen to them all and then not if you want to. But we go a lot more into like the fandom side and um, talk a little more freely about our experiences with Glee um, and some of the the things that we've seen <laughs> through a, throughout the years. Um, we also like... We're we're, we're going to soon like delve into some of our fandom experiences. Like I went to Darren Chris's like listen up tour, Emily and Mandy like saw him in Hedwig on Broadway, which was very cool. Ooh. I didn't get to do that. So um, yeah, that's kind of the, you know, that's kind of our take on, on Glee a lot of times is uh, being in and around it when it was in its heyday. So yeah. And then if you guys want to follow me, um, my Instagram is be kind underscore rewind be with two E's be kind underscore rewind. Um, but yeah, so thanks you guys so much. I hope you come over to Glee on the Rocks, uh, cousin podcast to Glee Boot. Yes. <laughs> yes. that. <laughs> We're keeping it in the family. That's right. Um, you can follow Glee Boot on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. We are at Glee Boot Pod. You can also find us on Tumblr, gleebootpod.tumblr.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Colin of Rafter. And you can follow me on Instagram at a.m.swearingen. <laughs> Be so picked long. right up so on long. that. <laughs> the gap to dance I was like, too. oh, it's a it's a wrap. Okay. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you so much for coming on. I think next week they finally graduate. Uh, in the middle of the season? Them? Well, yeah, because okay. remember this is still technically the end of <gasps> season four school year. This is like season five is this why no one remembers it because it's like it's the a chaos, year, but then they're all in New York, and then they go back to McKinley. And so, why? <sighs> I'm excited for potentially having guests who've never seen Glee before to come onto the New York yeah. stuff and be like, "Wait, isn't this a show about high school Glee club?" <laughs> and we're like, like, "Yes, yes. <laughs> no." <laughs> <laughs> and that's where like everybody fell off because they were like what <laughs> what yep. is this so, but we're keep it. holding on <laughs> <laughs> like Safira and Aragon <laughs> <laughs> yeah because they're flying through the air yeah and you know he could fall off he doesn't have a saddle <laughs> like uh yep. pickup does maybe she was oh. referring to how Aragon kept holding on to his crush on that elf girl who was very not into him could be. Mm. I did know someone who said that elf girl was his ideal woman, and I was like, why she has no character traits. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he likes them. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, Glee Boot. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I love it. Glee Boot. Glee Boot.